What's up, fools? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode of the show is brought to you by Beeline Coffee. Beeline is... God, it's good. Every time I try a different coffee, and people know I like coffee, so they send me other coffees and stuff, I just go... This is not as good as Beeline Coffee. And it's so good because me, my coffee nerdness, I've worked with them in Florida where they do their roasting, and we've created the Roasted Tire 3.0, which I think is the perfect coffee blend. It's not cheap, but it's single origin. It is a perfect roast. It's a medium uh, body. It's medium roast, medium flavor, but a lot of caffeine. It's good for the mornings. It's got such a good flavor. Uh, The Roasted Tire 3.0 can be identified from our previous roasts because it has the Lamborghini Countach on it. The 2.0 had the Porsche. 1.0 had the Mustang. Uh, And if you use code TST at the Beeline Coffee store, BeelineCoffee.com. Any size order, big or small, whether it's one pound, 10 pounds, or an annual subscription, uh, I'll give you 15% off your total order at Beeline Coffee. That's code TST at BeelineCoffee.com, and I'll give you 15% off your whole order. You should really try it. If you love coffee, I mean, I realize not everyone is as big of a coffee nerd as I am, but a cup of coffee is how I start every single morning, and it's just so nice to have a really good quality cup of coffee. And if it's just you, a, a, ba- a pound lasts quite some time. You know, you, it's a little more expensive, but it does last a while. So, BeelineCoffee.com, code TST, 15% off. Also, haven't promoted them in a while, but Dylan Optic Sunglasses, the official eyewear of the Smoking Tire. A lot of people ask me about them. I'm always wearing my Dillons. Uh, wherever I go, people are people think my glasses are fogged up or whatever. The matte finish uh, is not just indicative of uh, standing out in the crowd. It's not just a different look. Uh, that The glass in Dillon Optics is so good. It's like HD life. It's so clear and crystal. It's it's polarized. It's, uh, it's anti-reflective. And uh, they have those matte finish lenses in all different colors. There's uh, silver, black green gold blue and I think they've got red coming out this year they've got the aviator style frames they've got the plastic wraparound style frames there's bigger frames smaller frames and if you go to the smokingtire.com and click on the partners tab I wish there was a better way to do it than that but it's one extra click go to the smokingtire.com click on the partners tab there's the Dylan optics banner right there if you use that link to order a pair of Dylan optics I will send you a free smoking tire t-shirt uh, just for supporting the people who support the show again go to the smokingtire.com Click on the Partners tab, and there's the Dylan Optics banner. Use that to get to their website. It tracks back to us, and we know to send you a free T-shirt with every pair of Dylan Optics sunglasses ordered. All right, then. On this episode of the program, one of my favorite guests in from the UK, it is always a treat to have him, Richard Porter is in studio. You may uh, remember him as being the head script writer on Top Gear UK. He's also the uh, head script writer on the Amazon series, Amazon as he would say, the Amazon series, uh, The Grand Tour. He is the author of How to Be a Motoring Journalist by Roy Lanchester, a fictional work um, of... uh, a parody, and uh, also wrote and on that bombshell a behind the scenes look at uh, at Top Gear. He's a uh, he's a funny guy. He's a, it's a great show. We love having him here. Uh, it's on vacation. We recorded this one on Christmas Eve, but here he is, Richard Porter of the Grand Tour on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Right. Smoking Tire Podcast. Hello, everyone. It's Christmas motherfucking Eve. And guess what we're doing? We're working today. It's a work day for us. Sort so of. Is this his work? Is it? Yeah. I don't, feel I don't know. It depends. It, de- it depends. The definition of work will be, do we get super chat money? <laughs> if, we, okay. if we get paid, then it's work. And if what, not, it's a hobby. You're cutting That's me what, in for what? 50%? Yep. 60%? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's uh, just like you cut me in on all those Grand Tour <laughs> royalties. I need to, I have a bone to pick with you about the Grand Tour. Why? That I don't love the show? Yeah, because I've okay. heard you. Every time I listen to uh, to your show in the car and you're slaying off, I'm like, I can't wait to see I'm sorry. Farrah. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna sorry. I'm going to take it up it's, with Farrah. It doesn't mean I don't like you. 
I'm they, glad you listen, say I took it extremely personally. I'm sure you did. Me, all the people who've ever said they don't like things you've worked on, I'm sure you take <laughs> very personally. No, everyone loves everything that I've ever worked. For oh, those wait, who wait. don't recognize the voice, that is Mr. Richard Porter. Welcome, sir. Hello. Script editor? Are you, is it technically script editor of Grand Tour? Uh, you were of Top Gear. What are you? Are you yes, I still am. Yeah, script yeah, editor. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. The man behind Sniff Petrol, as well as uh, the new Smith and Sniff channel on YouTube, which we can't play any videos of because of copyright infringement rules. Really? But it's my copyright, surely. I know, but I... the software doesn't. Uh, the software will tell me to go fuck myself. Gosh darn! Even algorithms. if you're like, it's okay. The software is like, no, it isn't. Really? Um, yep. Oh, it's, that's just how that's shit works. That's how shit works. Uh, um, and now, script editor of the Grand Tour. Good to see you again, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm happy me back. to have you here. I basically just invited myself on your show on Christmas no, you Eve. Do, as well. You did what I hope everyone that I like does, which is to say, I'm coming to town and do you want to do something? Which I, I everyone I like, I hope they do that. Because okay. I, don't, I don't follow your schedule. I don't know that you're in town. And I'm not going to bug you about coming on the show when I think you're in fucking England. Well, yeah, and I'm here. Technically, I'm on holiday, but I mean, so am I. You know, I well, find work. It, I find it a bit weird if you come to a city where you know people and you don't tell them you're coming. Yeah, I, well, but then that you, means I've got too many people to try and see now. You also have a. I I I understand your profession, and so if you came here for work, I know what that work schedule looks like, and I would not be mad if you didn't call. Yeah. Yeah, actually, the last time I was here, it was for work because we'd shot the big opening for the Grand yeah, Tour yeah, yeah. season one. Well, I went to. Oh, I didn't did, go. Did I didn't go to the did, opening. Yeah. I went to the first tent. You the first the tent. tent show. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. Yes, and you. and now the news is the tent is gone. The tent is gone. Which it's honest, available for weddings and bar mitzvahs though. Which, bro, if, if I'm honest, that was what I didn't love about the show. Yeah, I think a lot of people. I've said that before. Yeah, I yeah. I, th I like the films, but I didn't think the tent was working, and now the tent is gone. A long, long time ago on Top Gear, um, when we started getting a lot of um, people saying that their favorite things were the specials, you know, the big self-contained yeah. road trips, and which were usually sort of longer than an hour, or they were two parts, or yeah. two one hour. So. And, and I remember having a conversation with our executive producer and going, why don't we just do specials all the time and ditch the studio? Yeah. And it was kind of, it was a dumb thing to do, because obviously without the studio, that suddenly a lot of my work is gone. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm quite You know lazy. what you don't need? Me. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Permission to go outside and shoot myself in the head, sir. Uh, but I was because I am quite idle, I was just like, I've had enough. And at those days, it was it was always like, oh, God, because I used to have to do all the... Um, I used to call it grouting. You know where you grout between tiles? Yeah. To, well, I used to call it the grouting on the script because it was all the little bits that need filling in. Right. Because if they weren't there, they'd be missed. But that were and the terms side. you used were links. Yeah, which but were... then within the links, the grouting was stuff like, okay, every week we need a stig introduction, we right. need a guest introduction, we need some menu items. Oh, the some the some says the some says the okay. Now it's time to put a star on our reasonable price card. La la la. And at the beginning of the show, there was always that tonight, um, and then there'd be three probably right. quite stupid things that matched a bit of VT, mm. which we called the menu. And um, I used to have to do all that, and I just got a bit bored of it. So I said, why don't we just do specials? And uh, Andy, our, our exec, said, no, you, you, you can't do a whole series of specials. People, it just, you know, it would it'd be too much. Yeah. You need the light and shade of the studio. And in a way, he was right, but now he's decided that he's not so right that he isn't well, going to do exactly Well, something happened. That. I don't know what it was. What happened? What changed when, we, when you went from the Top Gear studio to the Grand Tour tent? Something about the vibe changed. Um, I guess it had a different feel because... The first season, shot, from an audience perspective, there yeah. was a lot of what seemed to be like insider... Anti well, okay, well, the BBC owns this IP, so yeah. we're going to do the exact opposite yeah. of this IP yeah. or, like, some subversive undercutting of that IP. Yeah. And I was, I was kind of, like, as a viewer, like, all right, we get it. You can't do this thing, so you did this thing that's not the thing. It's yes. like Elon's not a flamethrower. <laughs> you yes, did a bunch exactly. of those. I'm not looking. <laughs> God, hell, there's Brad Pitt over there. Don't look, don't look, don't yeah, look. Yeah, like, the, the let's kill, let's, we have to have a celebrity, but we don't, let's, let's well, murder him yeah. Instead yeah, of talking to him. That went down like a <laughs> jar of sick, didn't it? Which I was a bit disappointed about because it was my idea. <laughs> and what happened was we were in a meeting. <laughs> we spent a lot of time in meetings trying to figure out, you know, like you're saying, trying to get around IP stuff. Yeah. 
And then we were in a meeting and there were two things that we were discussing. And one was, why aren't we making use of the space outside? We had no plans to make any use of that area that you can see through the windows in the tent. Yeah. And secondly, uh, it, one of the things on the agenda was, how are we going to get around the fact we're not having guests? Mm -hmm. And as an idle throwaway, mostly just a joke in the room, I went, why don't we have guests arriving outside and every week they get run over or attacked by a lion or something like that? In the and room, then, that sounds funny. I know. That's all it was meant for was a room joke. <laughs> you know what room. it's like when you're brainstorming and stuff like that? The room jokes where you're just trying to keep everyone's spirits It does up. sound mm. funny in the room. Well, also, it would have been funny if you'd shot it like a VT, as in sort of, you know, shot it so that it wasn't live in front of an audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you could have really gone to town with stunt people and dummies and all sorts of stuff and made it really spectacular because... What happened was I made it as a room joke and then we carried on talking and then Jeremy put his hand up and went, um, stop, everyone, I can't get past what Porter just said. And we went back to it and he went, I think this is a really good idea, let's do it. And it sort of went from there. And the next thing, we're doing... Like know, nine of them. Nine of them. <laughs> and be, but I was just hamstrung by not being able to... I mean, we looked into... I wanted one of them to just be someone walks out and then like a massive bus drives by <laughs> and just runs them over. Doing that in front of a live audience is almost impossible. Yeah, yeah. Because it had to still work for the audience. It had to work for the audience and the cameras and at the, the cameras, same time. Yeah, yeah. And like, it violence a, doesn't work it that doesn't, way. It doesn't. No, you can't, you know, for example, what do we do? Brian Johnson out of ACDC. Yeah. I mean, he's like 90 or something. And we want him to get run over. <laughs> he doesn't even have hearing anymore. No, I know. It's just, he just hears <laughs> the whole time um poor brian i know bless him he's a lovely man as well mm -hmm. he's a really nice guy one well, of the coolest coolest oh, yeah. people i've ever met actually yeah, he is i'm me son yeah he's me everyone's me son <laughs> we had dinner with him, beer with him at like 8 a.m in new york city for a really? bit yeah he was one of the celebrities on one of the dumb shows i was on he oh. was kind enough to guest and what as a scene we drank beer at eight in the morning he was fucking yeah, great bless him he did once uh it, i we bizarrely we went down to australia they were doing top gear live down there and um a couple of us went down to go and see the people making the US, sorry, the Australian version of Top Gear and give them a little bit of um, guidance. And we were staying in the same hotel as ACDC, as it turns out. Mm. And we ended up having pizza and a beer in the bar with Brian. <laughs> and he's sitting there in this kind of armchair. And then about nine o'clock, he just went, all right, me sons, I'm getting upstairs to watch Dad's Army and spack up a fatty. <laughs> and Dad's Army is like this 1970s sitcom about the Second World War. That it's like, it's just such a kind of old man thing to watch. But then perfect. he was going to spack up a fatty as well. Perfect. So, yeah. Especially in a country that's like a felony. Uh, yeah. That's a really but big... Isn't, he's, he's the guy out of AC Yeah, he could do How anything. How dare they... It suggests he can't do what he wants to do. They, hey, listen, they arrested Snoop Dogg for weed here and Willie Nelson. Texas. That's what. That's uh, why you don't go to Texas. Yeah, yeah. don't mess with Texas. Um, wait, um, anyway, sorry, murdering so, celebrities. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we 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 started doing that, but it it was again. It was it was trying to make a virtue out of not having celebs on by saying you know we're just making a gag out yeah. of it. But it just didn't really work, and so obviously that got dropped. But then, of course, then we got actual celebs on for the second series. Yeah. Uh, so what was the what was the conversation like where it eventually was? It's time to get rid of the tent. Um. It wasn't, uh, or was I mean, that just a was that a just a Wilman literal executive decision? Like, it was, time's up, boys. Uh, well, because it's it's very complicated because uh, the original commission for the show was three seasons mm. series, as we call them, and they they were, um, you know, that was that was what Amazon wanted, paid a handsome amount of money for, and I mean, I personally, I should have assumed that might be it because. Yeah. We were the only sort of recognisable sl show slash format that they bought. Everything else they were making and continue to make is original. Yeah, scripted so, or dramas yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, This is the first thing where they sort of bought something that already existed in some form. And it made a statement. It was a good way for them to go, hey, look, everyone, we make TV now. Yeah, yeah. And so I sold thought, a lot of subscriptions. Yeah, I exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it did. They, they don't really share data with us. They like data. They don't share data with you. Really? No. So you don't actually know if the rate no, ratings are no, good? I've no it's idea. not just me that doesn't know. No, it's no, you have no, no idea. No, no one knows. Wilman, no idea. No, Clarkson, no, 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 no idea. No, 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 no. It was always made explicitly clear from the off, we will not tell you ratings. That's, That's just their so policy. Cr and it's not so it's like, you can't, can you get a thumbs up? <laughs> Is there a like, dislike? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be nice to think. But then also every time uh, we met people from Amazon, they were always so nice. And like, we had a debrief after the first series and they all came, like 30 of them came over to London 
And there were six of us, I think it was the hosts, me like, and Wilma. Like, where's everybody else? <laughs> yeah. And it was a bit like, oh, shit, we, we could have come to you, you know. It's like, it felt a bit, it was like, oh, no, we've made them all. Amazon company policy as well uh, says that everyone flies uh, economy. Doesn't matter how important really? you fly economy. I bet you don't become Jeremy a mean loves rich. that. Well, no, that's fine. You see, because we don't work for Amazon. We work for Jeremy oh. and Andy and so they, they have their own company. policy. Our policy is business class, my friend. Thank you very much. And first class yeah. for the presenters. So that's well. see, everyone, everyone except for Richard's tall. So that makes exactly. That makes, yeah, not so you, Richard. Take, other, uh, the but, other short Richard. Yeah, but no, we, the, the, our policy is a little more liberal. Yeah. Uh, on, on luxury, but yeah. So these poor thirty people who up to you know very senior. Oh TV bots God. shoved in the back of the plane and flown over. And and after that first season, we made a big mistake in that first season, which was that the second show was that one where the, it was the um, on the, the, the military training range in Jordan. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it had the, it was, what was it kind of inspired by? Was it Edge of Tomorrow was the movie? I forget now. Where it kept flashing back, you know, they had to oh, get it right. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was like, like Groundhog Day. Or yeah, like Groundhog Day. <laughs> And oh, yeah, you did the same thing like yeah, 30 times. I know. And it was and the thing is, I read this was I just started. That was I'd like the spinal tap freeform jazz yeah. odyssey <laughs> of automotive programs. Jeremy Clarkson, he wrote this. <laughs> uh yeah, I I just started back on the show and Jeremy had already written that script and I read it and I thought, this is fucking insane <laughs> and we shouldn't be doing this. It just seems mad and it's like making a film and it's just weird. And then they went and made it and came back. And I was like, oh, actually, this has got something to it. And I really, really liked that film. And actually, it bears repeated watching. Like, it gets better. There are Does more, it? there are little details. There's nuances in it. in it. Yeah, there's a bit, there's a line I absolutely love, which was an ad lib. But um, James, they were on that airliner, you know, that sort of terrorist mm-hmm. training airliner. And it's a real plane. And James came through the curtain from the rear bit of the plane. And Jeremy goes, James, are the terrorists dead? And he goes, everybody's dead. <laughs> He's just basically <laughs> machine guns, all of these dummies. But it's the way he says it, and also because it's James, and you don't expect yeah, it's James to be very dry delivery for this murder. Lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I really like that, that film. But we put it in the second show, I think as a kind of statement of, hey, things are going to be different sometimes. Mm. We're not going to do exactly what you expect. But what it actually did was it threw people off. They just, I think a lot of people hated it. They didn't get it. They didn't understand why. It didn't have any cars in it until the second uh, part, which doesn't help. Yeah. And so people just settled down. You know, the first episode, okay, it starts those three Mustangs going across the desert. There's loads of cars. It's quite carry. They go to Portugal. They're driving those three hypercars. Right. It settles all the fan base down because they go, oh, brilliant. This they is go, is this going to be cars? Okay, it's cars. It's cars. Thank God it's cars. <laughs> yeah. And then the second app was like, oh, no, it's not. It's, it's what, what the hell is it? And Isn't it, it weird how the audience, if you don't do the thing they expect you to do, like even if they trust, they trust you to be creative, but only within a certain. Yeah. Like, is this, how, I could, it's funny because like, you mentioned that <laughs> I complain about when, when people do this with me as well. If I do something different and everyone yeah. fucking hates it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I have complained about the same thing from people that I like. You know what I mean? If they go too conceptual, it's, you can shovel the shit all the way uphill with this same, yeah, the you, same, and humans uh, will be humans. Have you ever, there's a, a, a an English singer songwriter called Ralph McTell that if, his most famous song is Streets of London. I don't know if you know that. I won't I say it for copyright reasons, but <laughs> you can, that's allowed. Actually. Oh, is it? Okay, so it's that one that goes, let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of London. It's a sort of lilting, nothing. folky ballad. Got nothing, right, okay. sorry. It's Shazam, it's when, when, <laughs> not off my version, though. Um, and, Alexa, um, download yeah. Streets of London. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere an algorithm is going, oh, Matt Farrer likes Ralph McTell yeah, all of a sudden. Fuck, Sell nah. him loads of Ralph McTell. <laughs> but they did a brilliant thing. There's this uh, great uh, sort of cult sketch show in the UK called Big Train from the 90s. And uh-huh. they did this sketch with uh, Simon Pegg, actually, out of Star Trek. Okay. And things, playing a member of the audience with uh, someone else pretending to be Ralph McTell on the stage at a little pub gig. And it comes to him. He's just finished playing Streets of London. And he goes, okay, uh, you probably all knew that one. And now here's a new one. And it cuts the audience. And Simon Pegg goes, play Streets of London. <laughs> and then other people around him go, yeah, play Streets of London. And he goes, um, I, I, I just played it. <laughs> play it again. 
no, I'm going to play a new one now. And, it's, and he starts playing it, and Simon Pegg picks up a pint glass and throws it at the <laughs> stage. And like, I play, play so loud. That's like the uh, that movie that just came out, uh, uh, Stars Born, Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like that. The 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 most unrealistic thing about that movie is that the audience would be excited to hear a new one. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> never happened. I went to see uh, U2 playing at Twickenham <laughs> Stadium in London last summer because I got I got some freebies to go. And my wife's a huge U2 fan, and you know, I mean, oh, they an awesome they, show. They, exactly. they put on a hell of a show, yeah. and it was also them doing um, the Joshua Tree. In oh form. yeah so well that you why see you of go? course you go see that but then the second half of the show then they just do a grab bag of hits and yeah, it's like yeah. and they know how to pre- please a crowd but they, yeah. then they went Bono comes on and goes after after they'd done sort of one or something you know and everyone's like <laughs> really oh my god this is an amazing moment and the women go, okay, are fainting yes <laughs> that's it and people having the sort of religious moments and and uh, and then he went alright this is a new one and the temperature dropped yeah. in the stadium and you just go I think I'm going to get a Ooh. pint <laughs> yeah it was it was incredible you just go oh that's a ballsy thing to do yeah but I, I, I did, even the bands I've loved for I go see Pearl Jam I've been to 52 Pearl Jam shows seriously and it, yeah seriously are they still going fuck yeah have you never seen Pearl Jam no I so so they, strongly recommend it I used to uh, I, I quite like Pearl Jam but I used to go out with a girl who's a huge Pearl Jam fan. And oh, is that too? That's a Pearl Jam tattoo. Yeah, um, yeah. An ex girlfriend of mine was a huge Pearl Jam fan, and I used to just deliberately irritate her by calling, telling her that Eddie Vedder's full name was Edward Vedwood, and for some reason it used to. Re- she go, "No, it isn't. That's not, not true. true." But it's really funny. I go, "No, he is. He's called Edward Vedwood," and they just shortened it. And she's like, "That's not true. You know that's not true." <laughs> No, you know what? Pearl Jam now is um, almost like uh, the Grateful Dead right. in that it's really about the touring. Okay. And they don't play like 40-minute songs, but every single show is different. And they have a really deep catalog, and they play fucking all of it. So you can go to four shows in a row, right. and they will be completely different. Ah. In fact, the only song I've seen at every single of those 52 shows is Even Flow. Oh, they play even say. flow at every single show and everything else. It's a total grab bag wow. and it's actually very fun. See, I'd be at the back going, do Jeremy, <laughs> play Jeremy. They do a lot the of Jeremy. I've play seen Jeremy, one. I'd say probably half the shows I see Jeremy. Okay. Yeah. They, I mean, even if you don't, aren't a huge fan, mm. they have enough hits that you will be yeah. satisfied at any show. It's like I went to, uh, what was it, Live Earth, the big uh, concert at Wembley Stadium, yeah. and uh, one of the headliners was um, uh, Foo Fighters. Yeah. Unbelievably good. Yeah, like crazy that. energy. I just, Dave Grohl's a beast. I don't know how they do it. I was like, It haunted me afterwards. I was going, how is a band that good like? Because <laughs> yeah. I was like, I kind of like them, but I'm not familiar with their stuff enough. And you realized, I, oh, wait, I, I know them. all of their stuff. And a mate of mine just gave me all their albums on a memory stick. Yeah. Do I listen to them at home? Do I buggery? It's weird. I yeah. just, I, I never go, oh, I'm in a Foo Fighters mood. But if someone went, I've got two tickets to go and see the Foo Fighters, I'd be like, Yeah, 100%. You know who I saw last year? I, that I, I saw Metallica. Oh, yeah? At the Rose Bowl last year, and I'm I liked Metallica in high school and college, and you know yeah. I got annoyed with them at Napster and all that bullshit. Oh yeah, <laughs> but let me tell you something: I have never in my life seen a more precise band. Really, they played like it was a symphony, and every note was flawless. It was the huh. most precision rock music I've ever seen played live. And they set everything on fire, which was very, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> was that the name of the tour? Metallica, <laughs> the everything's on fire tour. <laughs> Warning, where are asbestos? Yeah, I saw the band Rammstein back in the day. Ooh. They set everything Jeez, on fire. That, they had they all had flamethrowers. It was a crazy that show. make your ears ring, Rammstein? Do, 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 I mean, just, it wasn't how do they sing like think. that? How do those death metal guys sing like that and know. not then just go home and go, oh, I don't know. They only oh, speak in falsetto when yeah. they get home. <laughs> They're all really softly spoken. Uh, really. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I've just got to go and do some singing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet they I bet they have a crazy uh, like warm up routine. Yeah. I, their, their vocal exercises, you know, they're sipping tea yeah. and going. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we've, we've got your rider we were expecting it to be beer and cocaine and actually it's just honey you just want honey lots of honey okay ginkgo biloba is that correct sir uh, so <laughs> anyway, anyway didn't this used to be a car show i mean it can be anything right. I fucking want it it's be, christmas eve i can talk about that nice little seiko you've got going on there with the grado that's uh, lovely no that's an omega that 
Oh, is that an Omega? Yeah, oh, shit, that's I'm a, sorry that's if I insulted a, um, you there. Is that a Speedmaster? Uh, Speedmaster Mark II. Oh, that's fire. Don't you get... I apologize. Um, I do a watch show, are, are we going to do this live where I hand you my watch yeah, live sure. on air and you it's can look dope. at it and I'll just, I'll really just like sing it. Ralph McTell while oh, you're doing that. It's actually very pretty. That's, I like that. Uh, yeah, it's a racing dial on that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, Speedmaster who... Racing. Yeah, that's the one. with. That's so fun. Uh, they did a reissue of this a few years ago. They and, did. We can we I... can add... Look, I can add the watch cam if we want to get... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, look. Here, we'll get. We'll add it in. And here, you just pull this guy up. Oh, slide okay, it under. Okay, there we go. And hang on, I gotta. Okay. I just, you know, you do the thing here. I make it nice. I make it nice. I zoom it in. Um, the uh, oh, look at that. That's just lovely. See, that's got what um, old watch nerds would call a bit of patina to it because the dials yes. are faded, and that's why I didn't like the reissues because the the, the racing detail around the uh, edge is really bright and I don't like that and also the subdials for some reason were more inset and it's not yeah. it's just not as nice That's, I'm, I apologize for calling that a Seiko no I'm I love salty. Seikos as well I'm a, I'm a complete it's Seiko actually, nerd, it's but. similar to like a 6139 yes so like I know bit. what you mean it has that it has a look it has the same sort it's of proportions of the period it. yes well that's so this is a <laughs> 69 in the way 70. that a DeLorean also looks like a Lotus uh, you, you, well, you're talking to the wrong man because I don't think that, but some people do. I <laughs> they imagine. do a little bit, yeah, a little bit. It's, it's your Jajaro, isn't it? I it's mean, it's all it's, Jajaro. It's, it's that Jajaro. actually has that watch could be look. It, could, it has a like a Jajaro color scheme almost on it. Yeah, have you seen those uh, Seikos that he did? Mm -hmm. They're mental, like I from always, the Alien movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Ripley he did is fucking crazy. Yeah, I know. It's one of those ones where I go. I it'd be like uh, an Omega. You know the the Ploprof ones. Where oh. it, and you just go. <laughs> I don't think I, I could pull that off. Every time I go to a watch event, which always seems like a good idea, and then I get there and I go, this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's always somebody wearing a Jajaro Seiko, always. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a sea of Rolex Daytonas and yeah. shit, and then there's the one guy with the, the Jajaro Seiko. I bought my first Rolex this year. Um, Congratulations. I don't really like Rolexes, I'll be honest. And I, and I, I bought an old 70s uh, Air King. Oh, yeah. It's a good watch. really, really understated. Yeah, it's a good and, watch. And... Uh, I sort of get what people get about Rolexes now because it is just, I'm, I'm going to use the word exquisite. It's exquisitely lovely, made. Aren't they? Yeah. The detail and the dial and everything about it is yeah. just, but I find them a bit, I always think Rolexes are a bit like Ferraris that they're sort of what rich people go and buy because they can. And although yeah. the engineering is beyond reproach so yeah. these days with Ferraris and, and I guess with Rolexes, it's sort of, you can't necessarily, if you see someone wearing a Rolex, you go, are they into watches or are they just a rich? Right. Pick? No, it makes it totally. It's like the, it's just the standard go to. It's yeah. like your your first nice, you know, yeah, thing. I have a nice thing because I have money now. What I like about them is you can absolutely beat the shit out of them. They are so durable. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Rolexes are really well huh. made and durable watches and you can treat them like garbage hmm. and they are fine. Yeah. That's that's like my favorite thing about them, actually. I, I mean, I don't really do that much that. Well, uh, the, I mean, the most perilous thing I do with my watches is bathing my children because because <laughs> I forget that so much. I've got quite a lot of old stuff, and of course, you know, the yeah. seals are not what they were usually, and and you shouldn't get them. Wet. I don't intentionally beat the shit of my watches, but I was say, as I was a picture you going home and going, <laughs> oh, good day. I'll no, get but I'll tell you what, as a left-handed person, oh, I yeah. live as I wear my watch in my right hand, and so banisters and walls yes. in America, I just end up hitting it into stuff all the time. And that's why I know that. It's not yeah. because I am like swinging sledgehammers yeah. and like, <laughs> you know, doing construction with okay. it on. But yeah. like, I just in life, because I wear it on the quote wrong hand, mm. ended up hitting it into stuff all the time. And so I know it's durable. I'm not even sure that's a inverted commas wrong hand thing though, is it? Because I've got... It's um, not wrong. It's I've just got another lefty. one of these... Um, uh, it's a Mark III Seamaster, a Speedmaster Professional, mm -hmm. and it's got a big chunky case in it, like mm -hmm. a Flightmaster case, if you know those, mm -hmm. it's the same, same, very similar case. And it's tall, and it sits really tall on your yeah. wrist, and so it doesn't fit under a lot of shirt cuffs. Yeah, yeah. You leave your cuffs undone, which I do because I'm slovenly. But um, <laughs> when you're wearing a T-shirt, you're always twatting it on things, and it mm -hmm. makes a horrible noise. Conk, oh, conk. conk. And it's, it's, it, you know, it stands up to it yeah. really well. But at the same time, it's a lovely old watch. It was the first kind of, again, inverted commas, nice watch that mm. I ever got. It's 1973. And I've got the original, you know, that thing that watch bores do where they get, oh, it came with box and box papers. Box and papers. Box and papers. Box and papers. And, uh, and this is a box and papers uh, watch. And uh, and the, the papers show that it was bought in Brussels mm. on Christmas Eve, 1973. Pippin! 
So I'm thinking it's exactly present. It's for exactly someone, 35 or? years old. Yeah. Uh, 45 years old right now. Uh, yes. 45. Yeah, yeah. Me. Today is its birthday. I should have oh, worn it. But it's worn back it. in London sleeping. I can't wear. I I am too abusive on watches, and I can't wear vintage ones anymore. The modern ones really? are just much tougher. Yeah, the sapphire ah. crystals. I would just scratch them up too bad. The old ah. ones, but it's okay. Yeah, that's all right. Anyway, as far as Grand Tour goes, yes. Um, so tent is gone. Yes. Um, that was meant to be a secret. We were hoping that that wouldn't get out until the show went out in March. It was that didn't most... work out at all. That was, uh, that was fucking As I'm saying it, I'm news. thinking, I sound stupid saying this, because it's like there's 500 people. We had the biggest audience we'd ever had in that tent, uh, I think. And it was sort of knocking on 500 people. That was people. the biggest audience? It, yeah. Really? For, for the last show. Oh, did the tent get bigger than the first season? Uh, I was in the season one tent. W- no, the tent didn't get bigger, but what happened is we stopped. Th- there was a slight reconfiguring of it, and also because we put it into one place mm. in that field in Oxfordshire for series two and now three, uh, we could then get the local sort of fire inspector to come and certify it for a, a larger amount. So oh, we right. To sort of do individual certification for every place that we went to. Was Behind the, the scenes. Yeah, this is fascinating. B- Ask me paper. another question about no. fire certification. Fuck me, dude. I'm going building construction right now. I, uh, I, I, I have up in that. Then. I had to fight them over putting the, a fire hydrant. They wanted me to install a fire hydrant. In really? This, yeah. Is that a difficult set, thing to do? It's very expensive. Depending oh. on where you have to put it. Right. Because it's not the fire hydrant itself. It's that it's like, do you have to close a three lane road <laughs> for two days to do to, to install it? That's when you really get the problem. I would quite like a fire hydrant though outside my property <laughs> so that if I was driving a massive seventies land yacht, yeah. I, that at some point I could lose control of it and smash over the fire hydrant <laughs> and cause a nice huge geyser. Mountain. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Full police squad spec. I, I could use one outside my house in case my Countach catches fire. Ah, yeah. <laughs> We've done the Countach actually on the new series of the Grand Did Tour. you? Look at my seamless link there. Who uh who drove it and hated uh, it? <laughs> who drove no, it? Hammond, it hated? Hammond drove it and loved it and and James drove a Testarossa and they did a little twin test at the track. What uh what series Countach did he drive? It do you was, remember? Uh, uh, well, I'll say a simple one. It's Harry Metcalf's one. If you've oh, seen yeah. That. I think so I LP believe that's a 5000S, 5000, yeah, yeah, right? It's yeah. like an 83 or something like that. E- 84, maybe? 84, 85, even maybe? It's a very pretty car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I consulted with Harry when I bought mine. Did you? I asked, yeah, I asked for some for some tips. Yeah, he knows them um, well. Well, really well. And his has a lot of miles on it, right? He drives yeah, it a he lot. Does, he uses it. And that's the thing. And he yeah. was happy to loan it out to us. Yeah. Um, and how about is, is Harry's Countach mm. the only thing that has appeared on both the Grand Tour and Chris Harris's Top Gear? Because it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's on the set. It's on the it's on there the there rack well. and the set in yeah, new yeah. Top Gear. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how funny. I hadn't thought about that. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's appeared on both. No IP theft there, sir. No, <laughs> he's, he's like that friend that has to share in the divorce. Yes, yeah. <laughs> visit the husband <laughs> and the wife separately. So, yes, it's all amicable as long as we get access to Harry. It's and his a lovely car, right? It's a it's a beautiful car. Yeah, yeah. So no, Hammond Hammond loved it, and and James loved the Testarossa. But then we got back to the studio, and Jeremy had a different opinion. So. I'm sure he did. Here's, here's Harry was in. Oh, it's an E so, Reg. So E me. is here's Harry's Countach. Uh, yeah. E is. 88 actually no it's not an 88 is it well it might be an 87 but yeah e, is it e, a q was it a qv um, or an s i thought it was an i thought he had an s you see now I i'm can't looking remember. i gotta find the badge now because mine is a qv mine is an 88 right well, um, i think this is probably the same sort of era then oh, there's a you'll see the oh is there that. a badge here what does it say oh that's that's oh, yeah, QV. QV. Oh, it's, oh yeah. yeah, same as mine. Okay, it is a QV. So, oh my god, um, I'm so sorry. I did not click the live button. My the the video audience is probably no. I clicked the. I didn't share the picture because I just was paying attention to Lamborghinis. Same year as mine. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fucking rad. Do you know? Do you remember how many miles are on his? No. It's. I think it's a bunch. Because he drives the shit out of it. Yeah, well, that's it. He's just, he's not precious about it at all. He just uses it when he wants to. Yeah. And he lets other people use it when they want to as well. Yeah. Um, and wait, and so, so you brought him back to the studio and, oh, is it right hand drive? Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. So and Jeremy uh, was not such a fan. Yeah. So we knew that Jeremy was going to pull James and Richard up on their enthusiasm for these 80s supercars. And I was standing there and with Andy Willman. And then I looked around and went, Andy, Harry's standing behind us 
knowing what was going to happen in the next link. And, and Wilma went, distract him. Go and distract him. And I was like, how am I supposed to distract him? I'm like, oh, you know him. Go and talk to him about something. I was like, but he's watching the show. He's going to know. Yeah. And he was, in fact, really cool about it because, let's be honest, Harry doesn't care what Jeremy says about he, his cars. I'm sure he, he does. He likes them. Yeah. He owns them. He could buy another one if he wanted to. He's yeah. a rich and successful man. So yeah. why does he give what a does toss? He care what Jeremy Someone goes, I don't brain. like your car. Well, I do. So yeah. There we are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's he doesn't have anything to prove. No, it's not, he's not, that's the thing. He's he not doesn't. a Kuntash salesman. No, he exactly. He's like, yes. Harry's world of Kuntash is, oh, we're yeah. ruined. God damn it. I heard, when I talked to Harry, his opinion of it was pretty much the same as my opinion, which is the, the Testarossa was made a little better yeah. and is a little easier to use, mm. but that the Kuntash has such a presence to it that it's just it's so much more fun to mm. go play with because it's just so ridiculous yeah yeah, yeah. i know it's that's the thing and i think harry uh he understands as well the investment potential of those cars because he uh -huh. got in on the ground floor well not quite the ground i think floor, he bought it cheap yeah yeah knowing because he's clever i think that all of that 80s stuff was about to take off mm -hmm. because, you know, I mean, it's the usual reasons, isn't it? People who were kids in the 80s who had posters of those cars and now yeah. older people and some of them have got some money and they um, start buying up this stuff because some, some of the old hot hatchbacks from the 80s are going a bit yeah. empty in the UK. Speaking of posters, you since you brought up posters, check this out. I went out yesterday. Is that uh, your car? With, that's my car. Uh, I went out yesterday to the Top of the Snake, which in Malibu, they've just reopened it after right. the fire. Oh, God, this yeah. is, dude, This is torched out. This all this right here, oh, there were no. this was all green. There were trees. Look look how look at this. This was all vegetation. Yeah. It's torched out. There was the fire was brutal. Yeah. Everything is dead. But they reopened the road, they cleaned it, they put painted fresh lines on it. And I went out with Larry Chen, who is one of the best photographers mm. working today. I've heard him on this show. He's, yeah, he's a he's a he's an amazing photographer, so talented. And uh we shot a poster. Uh, he shot it. It's going to be crazy. Over 100 megapixels. Right. And with my car and this, and we're going to be selling it uh, through 1552, the wheel company, through their website. I'll have more announcements. Um, it, probably starting next week. It's going to be, I think, a 24 by 36 or maybe a 30 by 40 poster. And we're going to be selling it. And all the money is going to go to fire relief in Malibu. Nice. Um, because the devastation, like what you really can't see right down here is all of this is just rubble. Like right. the homes are all just gone. It's really sad. It's really, and it's, it's crazy to see. Um, and we're, we did this such beautiful poster. So yeah. And I'm enjoying the gold wheels as well. The gold wheels are very, oh. very fun. This is it. This was at Spike Ferriston's hangar. Yesterday. Where is Spike, that at um, uh, Santa Monica? It airport? is. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're staying quite near there. Are you? Well, I know that because lots of little planes keep flying. Over yeah. The house. yeah. yeah. No, no Santa Monica annoying. Airport, there's some super stealth uh, car collections in there. Mm. Letterman has a building in there. Oh, does he? Yeah. Is that where Seinfeld's cars are? Seinfeld's cars used to be there, and there, he now has his own building um, up the road from there that is the most invisible. <laughs> I really? <laughs> you'd, never, you'd never know. It's an invisible. Seinfeld's it world looks, of cars. It looks it. like. <laughs> Yeah, Jer yeah, Jerry's the place. The sign was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's uh, he's got he's got a, a super DL invisible with really? a hundred uh, million in cars in it. Nice. And uh, Spike's got a few toys in there in there. So we sh I was shooting <laughs> in the morning. We did the poster. In the afternoon, I went over to here. And there's um a guy named Matt Haranik who did a book called A Man and His Watch last year. Okay. You see that book? I don't know. It, I have I, a copy. It rings a bell, yes. It's a good book about... Was it, well, I think maybe I saw it being mentioned on Houdinki or something. Probably, yeah. He's, his second book is coming out. It's called A Man in His Car. Uh, so okay. I'm going to be featured with Countach in, in that. But Gold Wheels FTW. I'm mm, a fan of the I, gold wheels. Yes, yes. And also, Harry's got that snow corn interior, right? The like It's like the white almost yeah, interior. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be a bitch to keep clean. I have the regular tan, like camel tan. I think Harry just drives it naked. We we did um, I, I, just again to clunkily shift gears into sort of promoting something else that I do, but because I, I have this little YouTube channel with my mate Johnny Smith and Smith and one, Sniff, Smith and Sniff, get it on um, YouTube, subscribe, and, uh, yes, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Like I and subscribe. so uh, Johnny kept saying to me, and he's he's cleverer at sort of social media and, and things than me, I think, because he went, we should sort of keep saying to people like and subscribe on the vids, and I went, no, it just sounds stupid. Yeah, so you, you, sound sound like like a, a, you sound like a cunt. And then I was talking to, <laughs> quite, and, um, and I was talking to someone who works in that sort of world, and, and they went, "No, it works like a charm." 
trust me, do it. People just obediently go and like and subscribe if you say, yeah. please do that. And so we tried it, and sure enough, they do. Yeah, they do. I, th you know, I would be so much more successful at this if I was willing to do those jump through hoops, fucking yeah, bullshit yeah. things that I feel so ridiculous doing. I just won't do. There's a fantastic podcaster in the UK. Well, he's a comedian and uh, all sorts of things. A guy called Adam Buxton who interviews people. Oh, I've heard that. I've heard yeah. that name. His his podcast is great because he writes his own jingles uh -huh. uh, and makes his own ads in fact for the sponsors so all everything is in sort of his tone and he has a little song at the end of every episode that just goes like and subscribe and like and subscribe and and it's very catchy and it makes you want to like and subscribe Here he so is. it's quite effective adam adam dash buxton.co.uk yeah he's fantastic um and like and subscribe yeah his <laughs> now i can't get that song out of my head again um what was i saying oh yeah so um yeah we're obediently doing this little, liking and subscribing yeah so we're doing this little youtube um thing me and johnny and one of uh, the shows that that people seem to really like was because we just go out in a car and we try and review the car but then we get a bit distracted now we now have an editor who cuts stuff and he just picks bits that make him laugh and we've realized longer episodes work better than short ones, weirdly. I don't know how people can be bothered, because I often look, and if something's like 40 minutes yeah, long, yeah, yeah. I'll just go... <laughs> Even something like um, Harry Metcalf's Garage, because yeah. I you know, He I does really long like form. That. He yeah. does really long stuff, and I'll sort of go, oh, I haven't got time for that. But we did a 40-minute app for the first time a few weeks ago, and it, and it got loads of views. But we did one, uh, which was just one of our chats that just came from nowhere, which was um, Harry's Garage, but sort of as if Harry had completely lost his mind and decided to stage like a sort of English burning man at his farm. <laughs> Seriously? With all of the cars like getting spray painted in rainbow colours. They're oh all totally God. fucked up. And <laughs> Harry's wandering around. Johnny said, Harry's wandering around <laughs> completely naked, but still wearing Crocs. <laughs> and... Why can and, I picture that so I know, easily? it's just disturbing. Isn't it? And also, because he's done that thing that sort of men of a certain age who want to see rock and roll do, which is that although it's kind of his hair's thinning at the front, he's let it grow long at the back, a yeah, bit yeah. like uh, Mick Fleetwood. <laughs> and so we, we speculated on all this stuff. And bless him, Harry, because he's a top man, and Johnny and I know him. And, uh, but he took In America, it, the, the metaphor would be a Hulk Hogan there. <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> Hulk Metcalf. But bless him, Harry. Harry, oh, took somebody it in make that shirt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> somebody make a Hulk Metcalf. <laughs> oh, hello. Um, it's uh, WrestleMania. Uh, <laughs> but, but he's arriving in the ring in his kuntash with the doors up. Oh my god, like a baller, great. or reversing by sitting on the sill like the factory. I, you know, I can't do that. No, I think no. It's, now, weirdly, I wonder if it's no. It can't be easier in a right and drive car because the clutch is further away. The clutch is further away. I, I don't. I can't figure out how to do it. I know, like I've seen people do it. I know it can be done. Yeah. But I cannot do it. And it does look like something that could go really badly. Fucking wrong. hell! Yeah, it could. You fell out of your own car while it's in reverse, <laughs> while it's in reverse and in gear. My car. Or did you ever hear that story? There was a, there was a, a, a British uh, band called East Seventeen, and one of their um, members a guy called brian harvey mm -hmm. famously ran himself over with his own car oh, that's fucking great and uh but the brilliant bit of the backstory was that he he said oh i stopped because i'd been eating too many baked potatoes and i felt sick so i pulled over to be sick and he tried to sort of lean out of the car to be sick somehow but he fell, fell out. out of it and it was in gear I guess it was an automatic. Too many baked potatoes. I know, potatoes. the baked potatoes bit The baked potatoes weird. is the bit that doesn't... Is that a metaphor? Because vodka is made of potatoes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was wondering, it's like baked potatoes. <laughs> were they those baked potatoes that, just, that you eat through your nose? Baked potatoes just means I was smoking weed and drinking yeah. vodka. <laughs> 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 I was very it's, baked. It's all and I had all this potato. <laughs> this, is, this was years ago, and it still haunts me. I just go, why was he eating baked potatoes? What was he doing? <laughs> I'm picturing like The Martian where where Matt Damon has to exclusively eat potatoes for like a yeah. year and a half. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't that. I don't he know. Anyway, he ran himself over. He ran himself over. Yeah, it's a famous thing. I was thinking in the UK, it's just now, you know when, when a person becomes famous for one thing? Uh -huh. So it's like, you know, you, if, if John Lennon had um, been caught bumming a dog, then he would have been John yeah. Lennon. Yeah, you imagine, but you remember when he bummed a dog? Um, it's the Pee Wee Herman. Yes. Pee Wee Herman, all he did was you know, have a little wank in a theater <laughs> at a time when lots of other people were doing that. Pee and he can, big wank. he can never get away from that. No, one, no, it's odd, isn't it? And that's the mm. thing. So Brian Harvey, if you say Brian Harvey to people in the UK, they will usually go, oh yeah, ran himself ran over. Ran himself over. Baked potatoes. Do we know what kind of car it was? Uh, do you know what? I think I do because I'm deeply tragic like that. I think it was a Mercedes W124 Cabrio. 
<laughs> Ran. Oh. Uh, I, did I spell his name wrong? Yeah, oh, yeah, but there you go. See, it comes up. There you go. Look. First Harvey, headline. <laughs> Harvey blames potato <laughs> feast for freak accident. It's a beautiful thing. Potato feast. Wow, they really Reverse, don't. See, he's reversing Mercedes. So. The Telegraph really doesn't do uh, capitalization, do they? What is that headline? They only is that a UK thing? Uh, they only capitalize the first letter of yeah, a title yeah, yeah. of the headline. Yeah, which I mean, <laughs> Wait, I is this, like mo- correct, this looks but, pretty modern. Uh, Two thousand five. Oh yeah. I, why do I? Why, for some reason, you told me that story, and I really pictured it well, happening like in the eighties. In the eighties, <laughs> yeah. Well, like, yeah, because there was the baked potato boom in the eighties, wasn't it? Everyone went mad <laughs> for potato. Potato <laughs> boom. <laughs> There actually was. Weirdly, joking aside, there was a chain of, I mean, I suppose like fast food restaurants called Spudgy Like in the UK, and they did bake <laughs> potatoes. Spudgy Like. And then there's one went, here called the Humble Potato as well. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's one in a, not far now, away. You can I've, go visit I, it today. I, if you want. I'm going now in my Mercedes convertible. <laughs> oh, no, my leg. Uh, That's I, fucking uh, hilarious. Speaking I, of cars, last time you were in uh, America, didn't like you have like a Dodge Dually thirty five hundred or something? Oh, you were that driving was, around that was years ago. That was the infamous when Aaron Gold. Friend, oh, the Aaron Gold the hook show up, right. hooked me up with that. What that. are you driving this time? You're here. Well, it is actually a massive truck because I I remembered that somebody I used to deal with at Ford in the UK in their press office mm-hmm. uh, emigrated out here to the states and works in Detroit now. So I emailed her and went, "Hey, long time no speak." Uh, Listen, coming to the US in uh, December, I don't suppose you could sort me out with a car. And she went, yeah, sure, sure we can. Because I went, I sort of did the whole, you're a bit of a favor to yeah, ask. Yeah. Do you you will get you. zero coverage. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I'm writing about it. Oh, you are? For a national I can lend you uh, GoPros if you want to do a, a, a sniff and a mad what, and sniff. on my own. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I, could, I look like Johnny. I could grow the, uh, grow, shave the sideburns. He's actually, you know, Johnny's, that's an old picture because Johnny's um, shaved his head now. He this oh has your really? haircut yeah. oh really yeah yeah because yeah. well, in this broadly. in this picture he looks a little like George Michael <laughs> really <laughs> I mean just the just weirdly the sideburns and the and it the, was in that that's in a Bentley Bentayga and one of the one of the conversations uh, we had in that Bentayga was about George Michael because we were driving around where, near where I live which yeah. is where George Michael used to live oh and um, did and you I, have faith uh, I you've got to have faith <laughs> a faith a faith <laughs> um, yeah George Michael lived just at the road in fact he was born just around the corner from where I live and then huh. he lived he just lived at the street because I I once saw him in a Range Rover mm-hmm. driving, uh, got to a roundabout and he was coming the other way. And as he went by, I was like, bloody hell, that's George Michael. And I put this on Twitter and then someone replied with, isn't he banned from driving for a year? Oh shit. And I looked it up and he, he sort was. Of was. Oh, and I was no. Like, oh no, I've just got George you Michael in trouble. Out, you narked out knocked George on, Michael knocked driving. on the, the lead singer of Wham. Uh, bless what, him. What? Really sad. He once rang the Top Gear office out of the blue and uh, and he went, hi, it's George Michael. <laughs> and he went around to the phone, I think slightly panicked, and went, and Jeremy was in the office by chance. He went, Jeremy, uh, George Michael's on the phone for you. And Jeremy went over and was like, hello. And George Michael's like, hi, listen, I want to talk to you about my Range Rover because I'm so sick of it going wrong. I had so many problems with it, <laughs> and the one before, but this one is Bizarre really driving covers. me nuts. Yeah. I just wondered, have you got any contacts at Land Rover who can help me out because the dealer's being useless and it's really winding me up? And Jeremy, thinking on his feet, went, yeah, I'm sure we can. But listen, while you're on, do you want to come on the show? Yeah. And George Michael went, can I talk about the problems with my Range Rover? <laughs> Jerry went, you can, but you'll, you know, be a proper guest and come on and do the whole thing. And he went, oh, no, I don't want to, I don't want to drive the car All he track. Want- if I can just come on and talk about my Range Rover, I'll do it. And Jerry's like, no, nah, it doesn't really work like that. But listen, you know, we'll keep into, and then he got cut off. And, and never called back. Yeah. I never called What back. a bizarre... It was really weird, but bless him. He Everything I read about George Michael after he died, he seemed like he was a uh, you know, a very conflicted and very uh, complicated guy and obviously not particularly happy in himself at times. Yeah. But he was also, it seems, an incredibly generous and good-hearted bloke and he did a lot of work. Well, those things are not mutually exclusive. No, no, exactly. They're yeah. not. And that's the thing. But I think he didn't... People didn't see that side of him until it sort of came out. You know, but it turns out, out he going, was afraid of driving a hatchback around a racetrack. Yeah, it turns de- out. Was, I think it's because he wouldn't be able to concentrate because he was so consumed with anger at the, his Range Rover going wrong again. <laughs> so, yeah. Can I come on your show and just complain about yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, like, it's not really a consumer show like that, but you know, it's, oh, we could have made fun of it if we. It could have been a good bit. Yeah, we've if got. If he a, played along, it could have been a good. We've bit. got a young man here from. Uh, he lives in North London. He's got a consumer <laughs> issue with his Range Rover. Please uh, welcome a Mr. Michael. 
<laughs> if you could have transcribed that conversation into a letter, you could yes. have opened a bit. <laughs> George from North <laughs> London. I just made it a running joke every week. Are we adding more letters from George Michael? Yeah, we have actually. Yeah, what's happened now? Uh, apparently one of the headlights has gone out. Uh, There's a guy who I've banned from commenting on this show who would just complain about he wanted to use my show to bitch about the dealer that wouldn't take his, his do, uh, do, do his warranty coverage on his Bentley. <laughs> I swear to God, it's not. It wasn't even like it was his fucking Nissan Altima. Like, like this fucking dealer's fucking me on the warranty, of my Bentley. <laughs> and he would every show he would comment and want me to address this issue, and I'd be like, "Stop it." The magazine that I write for, Evo, it's a sort of a, you know performance car magazine in the UK. It's, it's a very, good magazine, very good magazine. It is um, a good, very good magazine. And uh, one day I was up at the office, and they got a call, and it was from. Uh, Felix Dennis, the late owner of Evo and a load of other magazines of Dennis Publishing. And Felix Dennis, the big boss, rang the Evo office and spoke to one of the editors and went, uh, have you ever noticed when you're riding in the back of a, of a Bentley Mulsanne, there's a knocking noise from the back <laughs> suspension. It's really annoying. You should do a feature on it. And John Barkus, the editor at the time, was like, conflicted because obviously it's the big boss with yeah, power of life yeah, yeah. over the whole magazine Who the fuck is but he's suggesting <laughs> dog shit features that are just basically his personal problems that he wants the magazine to devote time to and if this go, was fox news that yeah. would be headline story yeah 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 <laughs> But Eva has a bit more integrity than that. And so what John had to kind of go through this. That's a great idea, Felix. Oh, but, my God. Yeah, and then sort of just sort of talk him down from it. And go, I got distracted there because I saw that thing about the... Yeah, the STI Subaru. coming in. Going, yeah. Is this, is this a real story? Well, the, yeah, the is this the picture they sent you? Yeah, <laughs> it really is. is. A it more, a press it photo. says Morgan teases new wide body sports car before. By the way, is that a three wheeler with the front two yeah, wheels yeah. just pushed <laughs> further out? Have they no, added a stabilizers off the back? We've wheel added well. training wheels and called it a wide body. <laughs> well, it's wider. I don't know what your problem is. But this picture of the Morgan shed. Well, it's a picture of a roller door. shutter, isn't it? Morgan <laughs> announces new roller shutter for 2019. <laughs> It's made of aluminium because the old wooden one went rotten. Oh, my God. I love fucking Morgan. They're, They're great, out of their they? mines. They're, they are fantastic. They, you uh, ever drive a Su Aero Super Sports? No. Fucking hilarious cars. It's like the great Gatsby. It yeah. makes, none of it makes any <laughs> sense. It's so silly and stupid. But you look over those fenders. You know, it makes a 911 look so pedestrian. Pontoon fenders look so pedestrian. Yeah. It's like this. It's like driving like a car from the 30s. It's yeah, yeah. nuts. No, I know. But that, it's actually that, fast. That. Yes, that's the thing, isn't it? They're, they're, they're not short power, and they're really light as well. Yeah, so they yeah. Just, they just zip along. Um, no, that is a real story. It always drives me mad. All the magazines, I don't know if they do it in the US, I haven't really noticed, but like uh, Auto Car Magazine in the UK is particularly prone to this kind of headline, where it'll say, like, Morgan teases new wide-body sports car, or Jaguar teases mm. new SUV. And I was going... It just makes me think that there's a load of engineers going, you're a twat, you're an idiot, you smell, no one likes you. Stop teasing the car! No, we like teasing the car. It's got, it's got really smelly doors. Do you want to tease a car? I'll let you tease a car. Last week, before I went on vacation, and I did go on a little vacation, uh, I drove, I went to Palm Springs to drive this. The Urus. The Urus. That looks weird there. Doesn't it? I mean, it, it always looks weird. It but looks, looks weird. It's really like, disjointed. That looks like one of those sort of, you know, mosaic. It things. looks like mosaics. a Pontiac Aztec, first off. Oh, Are you familiar does. with that car? Yes, sir. Pontiac Aztec? Oh, yeah. Does it sold in the UK? No. I don't know if it was. But I was just telling someone last night that I came to the US in 2000 for the LA show. Do you remember when the LA show was just before the Detroit show? Yeah. In January? Yeah. And I was working on old Top Gear, and GM called us up and went, would you like to come to the LA show with us and drive some cars? I can't remember what they wanted us to drive and go to the LA show and then we'll fly on to Detroit where it, all the actual cars are being revealed because mm. nothing was revealed at the LA yeah. show at that point. And so we went, that sounds great, but do you mind if we just come to the California bit of it and we'll do some filming on other stuff while we're out there? And even though that was quite a cheeky thing to ask, they went, yeah, no problem. Yeah. And then they put us up in shutters on the beach in, um, in Santa Monica. Santa Monica. Quite lovely. Isn't Schwarzenegger it? frequents it for breakfast. That's funny because when we were there, we were told that De Niro used to go for breakfast there. I wouldn't be surprised. And yeah. so it's a good was, restaurant. Yeah, a lovely restaurant. Yeah. The thing is, we went to this hotel and, you know, I was like 23 or four or something. And I was a bit like, 
Ooh, the nice mm-hmm. hotel. Oh, good, yeah. And I used to stay in the hotel uh, some days working on scripts for the next day's filming. We did all sorts of stuff. But what, what, the reason I bring this up is because GM had kind of taken over a lot of the hotel and put a lot of guests in there. And they got the concept Aztec parked out the front as their sort of centerpiece. You know, at that hotel, you sort of pull into a courtyard, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Aztec concept was parked, which did look better than the production car, but I remember them saying, this will become a production car. Oh, yeah, here's the Aztec concept. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Actually, you're right. It did look better. Wait, let me get a better... I mean, it still still looks pretty nutty, and I remember standing there in the yard with... um, Well, here's the concept, Uh, and then the production car side by side. I mean, it's still quite nuts, and I do remember looking at it with one of my colleagues and just going... What the bloody hell are they doing there? <laughs> 1999 concept. Yeah, that's it. It, jet wasn't, ski. it wasn't new. And this then was the beginning of 2000. Contrast that. There we go. To that. <laughs> <laughs> it's uncanny. It's real close, isn't it? Yeah, even some of the, sort of the way that the, the wheel arch yeah, trimmings don't quite seem to close. fit. Now, f- in fairness... The, the Urus does have some better angles. Yes. That it's looks not, quite good there. The darker the color, yes. the better it gets. The darker the light as well. If it's the pitch d- black, then you're golden. <laughs> At night, it's really good. Because also, some and angles, look, you the get door Every Urus comes up. with a free anima. I noticed that. <laughs> and, wait, and uh, it looks better. Where's the... Here. White is not its favorite flavor. Mm. However, the Ooh. interior is very nice. Yeah, I like This that leather... Tan, Lambert's not going to like this. It's like the Ford King Ranch leather, which is, re- <laughs> which is really good. Nice. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. You said, what am I driving out of Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I hit up a, a contact at Ford, and I've got a Ford Expedition. How do you like it? Well, I realize it's called Expedition because that's what you have to go on to walk around it. I mean, mother of It's Jesus. huge. I took this picture uh, of it parked next to an old-shaped Volvo XC90 on the street where I'm staying. And I sent it to some, I've got a little nerdy car chat WhatsApp group with some mates, and I sent it to the group, and uh, one of my mates kind of went, fuck off, that's a toy Volvo, what are you talking about? (laughs) Because the size difference, and I know there's a little bit of cheaty perspective in this, but look at that. The Expedition is a (laughs) mood and car. It's huge, look, if I put it up, it's really, uh, sorry, I can't really focus so well on it, but it's fucking huge difference. It really does. No, that's about right. Yeah, it's massive. It's a big car. Yeah, it's a huge car. I realize you get into it like you're getting into a building because it's got those deployable side steps, mm-hmm. which are very mm-hmm. nice. I mean, my boy is four, four and a half, and he he finds all of these things tremendously amusing. So yeah. that's great. It delights children. But then you sort of stand on the side step, and then you're sort of up there, and you kind of just walk into it like you're going into a house. It's, yeah. The doors are... If you leave... The funny thing about trucks like that and all these full-size SUVs, if you leave Los Angeles... Yeah. Which we're they do. seem much more normal. Yeah. In the city, though, you're like, this is so dumb. I have a friend who drives a Dodge Ram 2500, like yeah. a big heavy-duty Ram. Yeah. And when he parks it at his office in Santa Monica, I can see it from like a quarter <laughs> of a mile away. It's huge. Why has the sun gone out? Oh, <laughs> he's parked his truck. And, and then, if but if you go anywhere else, where else yeah. are you going? We're going to Arizona. Oh, yeah. It'll fit right in. Yeah. You won't even, you'll lose it in parking lots there. Yeah. Except my wife always, because she's from Arizona, she always worries about having a big multi-seated car out there because she goes, oh, people just think we're Mormons. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> no, that car is too nice for Mormons. It's do you Mormons know what? go mo- they go modest, right? If it was like six oh, years old, yeah, yeah, I suppose they do. Don't they? Yes, the it's Hasids, a brand new they all go van. Edition. Yes, the Hasids <laughs> all go minivan. So you could, you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, and it's like because I live uh, where I live in North London is quite a Jewish area, and there's a big synagogue. I think it's the biggest synagogue in the UK. It's just up the road from us. So there's a lot of Jewish families live around there. A lot yeah. of big Jewish families, very orthodox, and uh, I mean. The the time when they announced they were cancelling the Toyota Previa in the UK was a dark day for British Jewish families. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. They love a Previa. Love yeah. a Honda Shuttle as well, which I don't know if that We was... don't get the Shuttle. Is well, we don't from anymore. the Odyssey? Uh, I think it was the Odyssey, but way back, like 90s. They cancelled oh, it in yeah. the 2000s in the UK. Um, so you now have to sort of grey import. If you want a Japanese many seated people carry Previa's out. rule by the way yeah. the original bubble Previa yeah they're great aren't yeah they? mid-engine rear drive van fantastic yeah. yeah yeah no the engineering on that was that was <laughs> really good madness you go what they signed up because it's a bespoke engine I think isn't it so it yeah. could lie flat under it was the floor. a flat like 2.4 yeah flat cylinder. on the floor under yeah. the driver's seat so go, strange but when they went to the meeting went, wait so it's, it's going to be what is rear wheel drive <laughs> really why just because because it's mid-engined obviously it's rear wheel drive oh it's mid-engined why is it mid-engined because, because shut up because 
I think it was it was to get that really expansive uh, dash or to have That's I don't know to get a shorter wheelbase or they're also completely indestructible, aren't they? Broadly, I know you. So I drove I drove one twelve hundred miles off road with no preparation whatsoever. <laughs> And it was, <laughs> it was no oil in it, and it came. And back it was fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. Unbelievable. Yeah. It was well, absolutely ridiculous. Saying, you could have you could have come down to Golders Green near me and sold it to um, to someone because that's the thing. They abs- I've, I've, I swear, a lot of families that dead because what what do you do if you've had previous and then suddenly you can't get a previous officially anymore? <sighs> where do you go? I don't know. You got to start importing them or something. Yeah, there's a guy in Oregon who has an all previa taxi service. Really, he's got owns like a dozen of them, and they all have a half a million miles on them. Wow. Yeah, I, I got a ride with him once. It was incredible. Do you find as you get older, maybe this is just me, but I, I had this conversation with TV's James May because he, he, he totally gets this. But as I get older, I get off more on the quality of cars. A hundred percent. Like I'm, I'm drawn more to Toyotas now than I've ever been. Yeah, I know. I just well, kind of look at, I was looking at those new Cameries that you've got here because we don't. Because we don't. they're fast. You see them? They're I've like, heard they about look this. like race yeah, cars yeah. and they're fast. Well, that's a nice looking car. <laughs> yeah. It's better in real life than it is in the pictures. And we are actually going to get it. It's coming to the UK Woo-hoo! for the first time in ages. Look at this. This is the new Camry is like, it's actually like, this one's like a two tone thing happening, but it's like, it's very aggressive. Yeah. And they have, you know, 300, like they're like 350 yeah. horsepower. Like they're fast. But this is because I'm obviously becoming an old fuck. I'm in my 40s now. I find myself looking at that and going, yeah, I've heard there's a fast one, but also, oh, I bet the door fits on that beautiful. Yeah. I care much more about quality now. Like I used to be like, oh, horsepower this. And now I don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. Now I, because because you can make anything faster, but you can never unshit box something. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. it leaves know, the factory as a, a shit box, this shit box forever. Yeah. They go, oh, there's a new Fiat, and it's got a massively turbocharged four-cylinder engine that's making 490 horsepower. <laughs> uh, the doors are made of marzipan, and it runs on jet fuel, mm-hmm. and it will explode. And when I was 22, I'd have gone, yes! Yeah. <laughs> Whereas now, I'm like, well, that just sounds ridiculous. Yeah. But tell me more about that Toyota Avalon, about the- specifically. Tell me how uh, all the dashboard buttons make exactly the same when yeah. you press them. Yeah, no, that kind of stuff is great. I really I appreciate a Toyota now, I do, more, and it's and sure. I just I kind of I saw this morning as well. Um, what's the sort of large-ish SUV that you have? Toyota, here? yeah, Highlander, isn't it? The Highlander's gotten bigger. Yeah, yeah and my newest... father just bought one. Actually, oh, really? A new Highlander. It's a nice looking car. It's Again, pretty nice. Yeah. Someone has snuck into the Toyota design studio who knows how to draw. Yeah, because they're doing. Have you seen the new Corolla? I don't know. Is it coming here? The 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 new Corolla the hatchback. S- the sedan is the looker. There you go. Twenty nineteen Corolla sedan. And it is... What, this? No. Uh, Oh, hang on. Yeah, that. There you go. This one? Yeah, look at that. But look, Stance. Look at that. That's That's a Stancey car. It's not bad. Yeah. I've not been anti... I drove that Corolla XRS, the one that had the Elise engine in it. Okay. The 2ZZ engine. It was funny shit. Really? Yeah, we're at 8200 RPM Corolla. It was fantastic. Well, because that was the... Yeah, that we and had the that 2ZZ in the UK. engine. We had the what do they call it at home? Like two generations ago, three generations. Yeah, ago. they call it a uh, either XRS or XR5 or something. Yeah, like at home it was called the T Sport, maybe. Yeah, and I don't know. One turned up at the Evo office one. And day. then they have the hatchback. You see, one that's not too. a bad looking car. The hatchback's either, not that's, bad. It's a good color as well. No. Um, yeah, it's kind of a good color. It's like a, all, a cheaper version of the Ford Nitrous Blue. Oh yeah. Nitrous blue is the shit. That was the best color ever. Oh, so um, I've, since we're talking about cars, um, I've just ordered a new car. What'd uh, you get? Uh, we're getting a Jaguar I-Pace. Oh, really? The future is electric. Is that the electric one? Yeah. They've been running them around LA. They're cool looking. Yeah. So really they do cool a really looking. nice... So we've had a load of... This is our family car. It will be. And we've had a load of Mercs, Merc GLCs recently. This is our sort of family car. So you're having that color. Which the blue, color? The blue. Oh, look it's at called that. Cesium blue. Well, so we've just had like black and a, gray These are in person cars. rad looking. They've yeah, been yeah, running yeah. the reds around LA. Uh, okay. And they look hot. The yeah. red is a really sweet looking car. Well, it now. looks like the future. Yeah. It drives like the Have future. Have you had a go in one yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it drive know. awesome? Yeah. Brilliant. Like Tesla-ish? I've never driven a Tesla because I am tainted by association with Top Gear. Oh, really? Legal action that happened there. So, Well, why don't you just get one from someone that's not Tesla? Well, we did actually in the last series of the Grand Tour. We just borrowed a Model X yeah. from a dealer from a you know. Second well, have you fucked with Turo here? You know about Turo? I know about it, but I, do you know what? On my way over here, I suddenly went, "Oh, I've forgotten about Turo because I could have borrowed like you could have anything something interesting." Yeah, yeah, Turo's like the Airbnb of cars, mm, and yeah. they are full of Teslas in LA. Well, because that's how you drove a Model Three, wasn't I've it? I've driven all Teslas through Turo. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, because they don't do a lot of press sort of action. They do, do they? but mm, they're. 
they tend to gravitate towards those outlets that will most suck up to them. Right. <laughs> I mean, yes. and, and there are no shortage of them. Yeah. yeah um, but I, I, you should, you should have a go in a Model Three. I'd Model love 3 to. Is pretty I'd nice. really love to. I've seen a few around here because we don't have them at home yet. Yeah, they're think. all over around yeah, here. Yeah, there's yeah. There's loads. Like I saw two when I walked out of the airport. On yeah. Well, there's night, a but... dealer. I mean, three hundred yards from here. Oh, okay. The Tesla dealer. Right. But the, you, you know what? You, you know where you see them. If you drive between here and San Francisco, right? The number of transporter trucks. Oh, uh, okay. Coming right. southward. Yeah. yeah. Full. I mean, you'll see a dozen transporter trucks coming out full of them. There, uh. there's all over the place. But yeah, Toro's got a bunch of them. Hmm. So but, anyway, yeah, the Jag. Yeah. I I drove one, loved it. I really want because we do not many miles in our family car, mm-hmm. and it's all a lot of it's around London. So our current Merc is almost a year old and it's got five thousand miles on it. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, you don't need. You can get electric. Apart from for the that. fact we can't charge at home, but there's a public charging point around the corner. That's the only sort of logistical issue. Can you charge it fast? Does it have fast charging? Uh, yeah, and there are a few fast charging. The, the, the network is growing. It's the it's the weak link at the moment, but I'm prepared to front it out and see if we can do it. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, so we've had these, we've had these Mercs and things and they've always been gray or white or black. And, uh, I said to my wife, what color would you like the, the Jag to be? And I showed her some and I went, cause I quite like the blue. And she went, yeah. Is it, is it this blue? Yeah. Because she went, well, it's a car of the future. So you might as well have an interesting color. Cause yeah. it's an interesting car, which is why I love her. Cause like, that's the, what I would have said. I'm a firm believer in very fun colors. Yeah. Well, I like my supercars in gray. Yeah, and then my hatchbacks and shit in nuclear colors. It's a weird logic, though, isn't it? Because I like that. I would like a dressed down supercar, like, yeah. like a, a dark gray McLaren or something. Yeah, yeah, and yet, yeah. Painting a four eight eight pista dark gray does not make it a subtle car. So it's almost <laughs> like some perverse logic where you're going. I'm slightly embarrassed the supercar, so I'm just gonna make it. No, a I bit just muted. think you know. I don't know. There's something about like I I have a I have a Seiko that's like gold, I and then I have a really that. really you know I have more expensive stuff that's like kind of more invisible. Yeah. Granted, this is a guy with a Countach with gold wheels. So what can I say? It, yeah, you're a you're a complex but, character. No, but but the blue on this electric Jaguar is lovely, good, as is the red. Well, do you know what, Oswald? This is this is going to sound a bit clangy and name droppy amongst car people. But but before I chose the color definitively, I spoke to Jaguar chief designer Ian Callum, mm. who I know a little bit, and name went drop. clang, uh, and went, "What color would you have an eye pace?" And he went, well, actually, the one I've got at the moment is red, and I like the red. But, and I, I saw, I oh, I, I really like the blue. And he went, funnily enough, all the other people in our, my studio like the blue, and my next one is going to be blue because I've been persuaded. Did he do this car? Yeah. Oh, he did? Okay. And uh, someone told me the other day um, that, you know, there's this thing where chief designers, and you'll, they'll get rolled out at the launch of a new car in magazines and mm-hmm. on, on YouTube channels and stuff, talking about it as if they did it. And, in fact, you know, design director of a – big car company is a manager of yeah. other designers really and they spend all day and i know callum well enough i talked to him about this he says you know i spend half my life in meetings it's really frustrating yeah i just want to get i just out. want to draw sketches and yeah, yeah go and sort of prod around clay clay models and stuff but yeah the, the, you know, the design director is really just sets the tone and goes here's what i want and approves the sketches and approves the models they don't get their hands dirty so much but someone told me with this car that Callum was all over it. Like this is his really? car. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. He uh he has a really cool I spoke with him at Pebble Beach. He was such a sweetheart. Oh, he's brilliant. Um, he's absolutely brilliant bloke. What's his um is a Mark II? Yeah, he's got that Mark II that he sort of subtly. He's got this updated. really sweet, hot rodded Mark II. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Wait, let me get a better picture than that. A big Yeah. Look at this. This is so sexy. See if you can find um pictures of his XJC. Because I think his XJC is even nicer than that. XJC? Yeah, you know the convertible the two X, door? Sorry, not convertible. The two-door XJ from the 70s. Yeah, doesn't Harry have one of them as well? Yeah. Uh, why, is, why are we not getting large images as well? Ian Callum XJC. Is yeah, this it? No. No, it's got these big retro wheels on it, but they're like sort of racing uh, style. It's not. It's not. It's not been sort of featured in magazines and stuff not, the same way. Like I only that. know about it because I saw him put it on Twitter once and then asked him about it. And uh, it's, but it's absolutely mega. Oh, is that it? No, that's got some cool wheels on it. I'm a fan of that. XJC's rule. Yeah. There well, here's one. The Jag. This thing Jag built for some. Uh, oh, for the guy. Is that the Iron guy Maiden? in Iron Maiden? Yeah. That thing rules. Really? See, I, I hate that. Really? Like, yeah, because I hate the wire wheels, and also wait, wait, I hang saw on. It. this thing. Where where did it go? I forget who the guy is from Iron Maiden. It's um, Nico McBrain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You hate the wire wheels. Yeah, I find them very 
you know, because that's a late XJ, this is a Series 3, isn't it? And, yeah. And those, they never had those from new. Well, maybe they did actually over no, here. I don't, I don't, no, they didn't. And they had regular They certainly alloys. didn't at home because they had those those big pepper, what they call pepper pot alloys. But I saw this at the Geneva show earlier this year. They had it on their stand. And it, it's got a thing that drives me deranged oh. with fury, which What's is that? an old car with modern flat blade wiper blades on it. You know, oh. the ones I mean? Oh, you see here, what I mean? Yeah. And they, know, they always look toss on with those cars. one, the one individual yeah, 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 wiper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know it sort of cleans up the look, but what it, it just doesn't work somehow because it's an old design. Same with these. Look, it's got these uh, projector headlights. The projector look, headlights, I get that would drive me nuts too. But overall, I think this thing looks pretty rad. I, it's got sort of it's a bit of a curate's egg, isn't it? Because it's it's got some good bits to it, but I just it's overall I find it really crazy. annoying. What is going on? I don't know. There's a really <laughs> nutty jaguar. It's a little too much. Is this? I'm just, I'm trying to find Ian. That's see. This is a good look here. Yeah, that's good. That's These very two good. Piece actually, isn't yeah, yeah. I don't know who this is. I recommend uh, resto modding your jaguar XJCs, people. But are you sure it's not Harry's car? No, sure it's Ian Callum's. It's definitely Callum's because he's yeah he's had it all done over mm, uh well, find on your own time people. yes <laughs> do, do your own research <laughs> but i'm i'm excited for you to uh to have this eye pace because it looks very good i'm also excited to try one myself I still yeah you should it. you really should it's it's just it drives beautifully it yeah. really does i mean what's I the was, range well <laughs> it, they're claiming almost 300 miles oh well that's now, a lot yeah uh, in the week that i had it i think i um probably realistically was seeing sort of 200 and a bit of change out of it that's pretty good stuff. well the way i sold it to my wife because she was like is this, how often am i gonna have to charge this up because she uses our family car more than i do and so she was a bit like oh, i don't have to plug it in every day do i and, and she has a 20 mile round trip commute and yeah. so i went you'll be able to commute for two weeks straight before you charge it up and she's yeah, like yeah. fine let's get one yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it, the perception of electric cars it's like that thing where people are obsessed with uh, them not going very far and everybody i mean certainly in the uk well, it's always drives, about the what if i need to yeah act. same yeah. thing with the giant expedition what if i yeah. need to carry seven yeah. people and uh, you know it's like well how often do you really need yeah. to do that what if i need to tow a boat <laughs> you know, what are you talking about you, you don't own a boat in london <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah exactly it's the thing it's just like it's, it's yeah well, oh god well, but what if i had to you know rescue some orphans off a mountain yeah. you don't do that <laughs> do you get a, a sweet little tax credit as well in London for having that? Uh, no, it is exempt at the moment. For, well, don't, you don't pay any road tax. You know we pay road tax. Yeah. Of, I guess you license plates you pay for every year, do you? Yeah, so, yeah. So, we, yeah, we just do – it's separate to the your number plate, but you pay a road tax related to – uh, engine size and CO2 emissions and stuff. But yeah, electric yeah. cars at the moment, the road tax is zero. That's good. It will change, obviously, because the government doesn't. And it's, a a, it's only, you only, it's sort of a joke, right? Because like all these, there's some various plug in hybrids where yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. the McLaren or whatever, you can go 12 miles or yeah, something. Yeah. It's like just enough to clear that road tax hurdle. Um, I'm not sure about the McLaren, but there are plenty of cars where you kind of go, mm, now, come on. Yeah. That's, yeah, you're cheating a bit it's, there because uh, on the official cycle. I can't remember amazing. if it was the P1 or the, or the 918 or one of those cars can go just enough electric range well, it might be yeah you could um you can go into the center of london where we have oh called yeah. congestion charge which is now god how much is it now it's like 12 quid or something i think or is it about to become that it's expensive to just drive into the center of the city and that charging zone is going to get bigger and bigger they're expanding it out i haven't been to london in a while is there an actual like toll booth that you go through and pay uh, or is no, it done it's all done on cameras it's all done uh, on cameras ANPR automatic number plate recognition Oof. so yeah and then you get a letter in the post if you don't pay yeah and it's all a bit annoying but the surveillance um, state is uh, alive yeah, and well yeah it is a bit um, I suppose I always wonder about things like that you know people go oh you know you have to worry about what Facebook's got on you and I sort of think I don't think I'm that interesting I don't think there's anything that I do. I'll just go, what's yeah. he doing now? It's like a, a, a James May had this idea that he wanted to, you know, Amazon does people who bought this also bought yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And he wanted to buy loads and loads of copies of Richard Hammond's last book. But every time he bought one, he would also buy a dildo. <laughs> and he was serious about this. He thought it would be hilarious. But then that he went, hang on a really minute. really fucking It's going to cost me a fortune in books and dildos. Just so that when people go, just so oh, Richard really? Hammond's new book. People who always bought this also bought, that oh my God, the alien invader. What the hell is funny? Going on? That's really funny. 
That's that's James for you. Bring that back, James. That's great. <laughs> well, Do it. Real now. Sell your fucking Ferrari and buy all, use it all yeah, to, use buy the dildos to just buy dildos and books. <laughs> I think he was more annoyed at the fact that he'd be having to waste all his money on Hammond's book. He didn't that's really care about so, the dildos. He could you could probably return the books. Yes, <laughs> dildos. <laughs> they have a fairly strict policy on the return of A lot of people. Dildos. People who bought this book also bought these dildos. They then returned the book. <laughs> <laughs> All someone, right. Someone kept sending. This is uh, this is not a joke. But someone kept sending dildos to the Grand Tour office addressed to Jeremy. Really? Yeah. We could never figure out what was going on. It was that really is weird. Awesome. Not just dildos, butt plugs, and and various other bits. Do you think of, it was from this? They were all from the same person. Don't know. Do you think there was like a a Facebook group dedicated yes. to crowdfunding? <laughs> Send clocks and sex toys. <laughs> dot com. Dude, he. You know. He says shit a lot that is, you know, either he means it or he doesn't and he's joking, but mm. people get fucking angry. Uh, Didn't yeah. someone dump a truckload of manure on his front lawn at some point? Oh, yeah, they did. Now, who was that? I was sort of like Friends of the Earth or some affiliate <laughs> to that. Yeah, just because they got sort of sick of him kind of, I don't know. They Promoting gas that, yes, cars. Yes, exactly. It was yeah, that yeah. They perceived that he was killing the environment, so they dumped yeah. a load of horse manure outside his house, um, which is not as good as... Um, they used to do these Top Gear live shows, which were a sort of separate thing. I mean, licensed by the BBC to use the name, but they were run by a separate company. And this company was run by a guy, I won't name him, but he is, and his company, I did work for them as well. They're the worst payers of anyone I've ever worked for. They take forever to pay your invoices. And as a freelancer, you know, it's yeah. really annoying when that happens. That's, that's the worst thing you could be, yeah. pretty much, yeah. for a freelancer. And I learned not to take it personally because I discovered that they were doing the same trick on... Jeremy, Richard, and James. So it's like you're even dicking around the talent. <laughs> and Jeremy got so annoyed about this that he got our old tame mechanic from the show, who also used to do tech stuff on the on the live shows, uh -huh. Steve, to get a khaki old rusty van and write really rude slogans about the guy who ran the company all down the side of it and then go and dump it outside his house. But unfortunately, Steve the mechanic got the address wrong and dumped it outside this guy's oh, neighbor's no. house. <laughs> but, but it had this guy's <laughs> name on it, so they knew immediately what was going on and went round and went, oh, excuse me, I think that van over there is for you. <laughs> and it had, I think it had the C word on it. So it was quite a strong van, you know. Not one you'd want to go open your curtains and go, oh, it still says that on That's it. But yeah. So funny. And then Jeremy got word of it, it was like, oh, I can't even trust you to do a simple thing like get the right house. <laughs> the wrong house. Oh my god, that's fucking good. I like that very much. Well, should we answer some of our viewer questions? Yeah. All right, live folks. I'm gonna we you've been collectively uh getting into super chat for about an hour now. I'm gonna give you 10 more minutes to leave us a question, then I'm going to cut it off, and uh, Porter and I are going to go through some of these. Uh, let's see. D -D Ding Bong says, really enjoying TST. Thank you. I'm 6'2 and a deuce and a half, so roughly my size. Currently have a Volvo S80 T6. Love it. Looking for a fun, long-distance GT car. Thinking a C6 Grand Sport. That's a Corvette, Richard. Mm. Or a Volkswagen Golf R. Boy, are these comparable. Yeah. Any suggestions or opinions? Fun, long-distance GT cars. C6 Court Grand Sport is going to be among them. Very Disparate, super different. Yeah. They're I'm not hungry. I like Mexican food. Should I have spaghetti bolognese or ice cream? <laughs> I know. What, what, your question doesn't make sense. <laughs> I know exactly how um, you feel. Uh, suggestions or opinions on a fun long distance GT car? Well, the, look, C6 Grand Sport is a good option. Big trunk, good ride. Big trunk? Yeah. Really? You have a big trunk. Ah. You can fit a ton of shit in the back of a Corvette. Oh, a ton of shit. Not as long as it's not a convertible. The hard right. top yeah, one yeah, with yeah. the hatchback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean... Well, you could have that nice aero wagon thing done to it, couldn't you? That um, You know that? what? People didn't like those, but I did. did people I thought, didn't like them? Uh, people... Uh, the general consensus was that it was not an improvement. No. I thought it was cool oh, as it was shit. Mega, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. And actually, as a, as a way to uh, change um, the, the look of a car without... Without it's like you do not much and a ton at the same time. Yeah. Because literally all you have to do is change the hatch. Yeah, yeah. It's that's the what only I was part you change. And about it. Yeah, and it changes the entire look of the car. What's interesting about it is it makes visibility way worse. <laughs> <laughs> and it also doesn't add anything to your uh, store <laughs> luggage capacity. But it looks I think it looks really cool. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm a I fan. wonder, could you make my Corvette the same or worse? <laughs> yes, we can, sir. Yes, we can. I'm I'm a 
big fan of Arrow Wagon. Yeah, you could go Arrow Wagon for sure. Um, uh, uh, but Golf, Golf R, they're lovely, but I mean... I, it's a GT uh, car. GT car. Also, it's a sort of long distance to me is not necessarily the same as fun, is it? Because that no. implies just driving in a straight line. Right. I would say maybe an E92 M3 with a V8. Oh, that's a good option. Similar nice. price to a C6 oh, one of those oh, C63s. C63 nice, Mercedes. Good cruisers or an E63. Yes. Oh, they're good cruisers. An, e, an, an AMG E-Class. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And if he likes an S80, he's already into huge sedans. Yeah. E63 is a good one. E63 Wagon is even better. Oh, yeah. That's a fun long distance oh, yeah. GT car. Yes. Yeah. E63 yeah. Wagon. There we go. That's where we leave it. <laughs> sort of. uh, mm, 0128 says, get Ethan Tufts on the podcast. All right. Ethan, email me. <laughs> um, he, people just want to plug stuff. That's okay. Vlad Tataranu. I love Smith and Sniff. Looking forward to it every Friday. How much time does writing and producing it take, and how can people <laughs> support it? Um, thanks, Vlad. Uh, writing. It's not written at all. It's, I mean, the most uh, we ever do with writing is that sometimes I think of something I want to tell Johnny and I make a note of it in my phone and then I found out he does the same. And we never compare notes before we start. You, don't, you should trade phones. Yeah, <laughs> well, we did talk about sort of like doing kind of like writing things on bits of paper and swapping them. And, but then it's like, is this all getting a bit too produced? And it kind of seems to work with us just talking. And so we genuinely do. We just, we, the, the biggest hassle is rigging the mini cams, which as you know, can be yeah. a complete ball ache. But um, Johnny does that because uh, they're his cameras and he knows what he's doing. <laughs> and I sort of go and get some coffee while he's doing that and bring it back. And then and that then actually we, we helps. That's and we just very... drive and we talk shit and, and we always talk for too long. And then we hand it all over to our editor, James, who's very patient. And he just cuts together the bits that make him laugh. So how can they support it? Uh, take, well, take we money? Are, our new, uh, so we sort of finished for the year now. We'll be back next year and uh, sort of hopefully in January. And we, uh, fingers crossed, have got some sponsors on board. All right. So there is no, uh, the best way you can support it is just by liking and subscribing. Like and subscribe. All right. Oh, and Vlad has a part two. Uh, uh -huh. How was the transition from Top Gear to the Grand Tour for you and the staff members that went with you from the old show? And uh, how are you all getting along with the team that remained at the old show? Um, uh, transition was fine, I suppose. It's like, you know, new office and <laughs> we just remember to go to a different place. Slightly uh, better office, I imagine. Yeah. But when I learned that it. that trailer was not a joke and was your actual office, yeah, yeah. that was a real... Yeah. fourth wall moment for me. <laughs> it's like, hang on a minute. That shithole was yeah, yeah. really the office. Well, that was our studio office, yeah. We had a slightly less shitty office in London, but it was we still ruined it. And we've ruined the Grand Tour office. I mean, it's full of crap. I was saying, there's an old colleague of mine who lives out here now, one of the guys who was researcher on the Grand Tour. And um, I went for a beer with him last night. And, and I was telling him, he was going, how much more crap's built up since I left? And I was like, oh my God, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I needed some bubble wrap the other day to wrap up something I'd sold on eBay and we hadn't got any bubble wrap. But I realized we had got a stack of about 18 alloy wheels that were all wrapped in <laughs> bubble wrap. So I just cut some off that. I was like, why have we got these alloys for old BMWs in the corner? No one even knows. And I think it just with showed the, up. Yeah, it's it's almost like yeah, we're a magnet for car related crap. It's so go, funny. Is this a starter motor, and if so, what for? It's just yeah, dreadful, real mess in there. That's now. so funny. But yeah, no, it was ever thus. Um, how are we all getting along with the Top Gear team? Fine. Yeah, great. I mean, I saw um, Alex, who's the series editor of Top Gear, the other day for dinner, and he's he's a happy guy now. He's sort of got a new because he spent had a, the summer they just doing had a nothing. little fucking shake up over there, didn't they? Yeah, so they've got two new. Two new hosts. I feel bad for Rory. For yeah, Rory got I know, screwed. It's a bit sad. He I think did, he was doing he? a good job. I thought he was doing a good job, and I, just, I don't quite understand. I don't know what was going on behind the scenes that led them to that conclusion. But I'm, I'm sure it was political of some kind. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting to me is that I thought for many years that when we were doing the show, the BBC was sort of wearily tolerant of what they perceived to be our kind of laddishness. You know, mm. this kind of oh, it's three blokes just you know doing men stuff and being annoying and. And that they would want to move away from that kind of pure mannishness. But what they actually seem to have done with this new lineup is to kind of double down on it because both those guys they've got in 
you know, one I, of I've them. I've never heard of either of well, them. Well, no, I was thinking that they are quite well known in the UK, but yes, they're not, they're not internationally famous. They're not Matt LeBlanc. But that, yeah, well, I when, I heard, when I heard Joey was leaving, I yeah. spoke to Harris briefly. <laughs> Just, did you notice that Harris always calls Matt LeBlanc Joey? He always calls him Joey, and that's why <laughs> I, call, I always call him Joey too now. <laughs> so, I was like, I think, do you do this to his face? Yeah, he does. Not, does he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. It's funny. It's a really funny bit, actually. It's one of the fun. It's like he's, he's, he's now done it. You know, it starts out funny becomes not funny and then yeah. it comes back to being funny That's it's back to being funny. funny yeah but i asked him i was like dude put in a put in a fucking good word you know, hook it up maybe right get yeah. the pharaoh over there and they said he said um they really 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 did not want some they wanted someone very english right. he used the word very english hmm. he said not just english like very English. Okay. I was like, okay. Well, the former captain of the England cricket team is about <laughs> that, as English as That's yeah, as I mean, English as it gets. Find out he owns a tea plantation as well. He's super English. But <laughs> most English person. <laughs> yeah. So he's not as well because I think to American ears, I don't know if you've heard him talking, but he's he's from the north of England, so he's you know he's got quite a sort of northern accent. So he's uh -huh. not sort of or ah oh, good good evening. Yes, I've just been playing some cricket and I'm absolutely parched <laughs> for a cup of tea or maybe some warm brown beer if you have it with twigs floating in it. He's not. He's like he's he's Yorkshire, so he's like proper Yorkshire. All right, yeah doing mate yeah, oh yeah, really so, yeah and so is the and then paddy mcginnis the other guy who's a mm -hmm. comedian and a tv host is from lancashire so sort of broadly the same kind of um uh latitude yeah but different longitude other side of the pennines if you were english you'd go I, oh God, yeah, the war of the roses you know they, these two counties basically mm -hmm. fought each other um but yeah he's also northern so they're not kind of English English in the way that you might perceive. Oh, okay. It's not Hugh Grant kind of yeah. <laughs> stammering. Yeah, exactly. English. They're more kind of. Oh, well, right. um, at least now Chris gets to be um, short Jeremy, I guess. You know, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, no. In terms of us getting on, we get on very well. In fact, there was a really nice thing that happened over the summer because um, Top Gear was on hiatus because they were finding their new hosts with Matt having mm. announced he was leaving, and and so they they weren't making the show and. Uh, Andy, our exec, rang Alex, their exec, and said, have you got any spare members of staff? Because we're really sure we oh, need some new people. That's nice. And there was a little kind of like in, in sport, you know, you get like, free transfer and stuff. So, yeah, we had um, uh, uh, one or two people sort of who... Oh, yes, because we took an editor as well. We had one of their editors came in. How kind. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we were paying them. It wasn't like... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah no. But, yeah, and it was understood. We, we will... Uh, because we will come to the end of our... Uh, yeah. Need for them you just as you're firing back. back up, and that's sort the of thing. They've gone back, and now Top Gear have taken um, two of our old researchers or right, assistant producers. Oh, that's nice. Because again, we're, we're, we've we've yeah, wound keep down these now. folks working. So it's all one big. I mean, it's not what, like one big happy family. We're two. We're two separate productions. But no, it's like you can have Easter at Dad's house yes, exactly. and Christmas <laughs> at Mom's house. Yeah. Uh, Miguel says modern cars and engines are becoming so techy and complicated. What car? and or engine can you still buy in a showroom that is as basic and simple as possible? What uh, is the most basic in new Europe, car? You can buy the Dacia Sandero. Have you seen that? I know that it's James May's yes. favorite car. And they're about as simple as it gets, I suppose. I mean, then, you can buy a couple cars in America that are ridiculously simple, too. I mean, here's a... Here's a Dacia Sandero. Oh, see, that's a fancy one. That's a oh, stepway. Yeah. What's, a, what's, the, the, ba the, what's the most basic stuff. one? Well, if you can find one that there, see, look, that's the, about oh, as basic as it goes. that's fucking heinous. Well, they've started coloring in the bumpers now. They used to, they used to have... Yeah, I mean, ones. here in America, you can buy a Nissan Versa Note. Can you still buy that? I think so. Wow. Yeah, you can buy a... that's quite an old... A Versa Note you can buy in America. You can buy um, a Hyundai um, Accent is really cheap and, yeah. uh, and basic. Now, who's that guy? I think I've heard you mentioning him on this show. Is it? Um, he's the one who checks shipping notes and comes up with random bits of. Oh, Bozy! Yeah, Bozy. Bozy's my homie. No, so Bozy, uh, who's on Twitter, is Hoonable. Mm. Um, you guys should fucking hire him as a researcher. He is a genius. I love this dude. And his brother Boyan is the man as well. Bozy is a Serbian immigrant who yeah. came here as a refugee and mm. as a child, and he is the fucking smartest person I know. And he goes through import documents yeah, yeah. and like crazy parts manuals parts and stuff. So this he is why I bring it up. anything. 
he was talking on Twitter the other day about, is it the Chevrolet Express van? Yeah. And he was talking about the parts in it and what they were first used in. <laughs> and it was sensational. I mean, it's super nerdy stuff. It's no, like kind of amazing. high frequency nerdery, it's, but it's fantastic. Follow, it's yeah, B-O-Z-I, Bozy. People ask me all the time, like, who's that fucking guy you're talking about? Is it Tatarevich? Bozy Tatrovic. Yes. Tatrovic. Oh, Tatrovic. Okay. He, uh, he also, he does everything from, he he's bought and sold cars. He works on cars. This is this little Miata here is the the car that I think that's me getting out of it. This is the car we race in uh, AER. Mm. And he writes for Road and Track. He's written for Jalopnik. And he has the best nerdy fucking Twitter feed ever. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, in terms of simplicity, I was thinking that one of those Chevy Express fans sounds like that. They are the most primitive shit boxes. Yeah. Well, but the guy who was was asking the question, he wanted simplicity. Yeah. yeah. I think they had an uptick in sales recently. Really? Someone, I think it was Bozy, I forget who it was, posted like something on Twitter that was like, here's all the cars that the, the, like the Express outsold like all Jaguar, Maserati, and Land Rover together or something. It was ridiculous. But I was looking. I was going, well, there's something, because I think US car makers do this very well, that sort of, um, you know, take well-proven stuff and just reuse it endlessly yeah, yeah. Know, to, to just get the, not only get their money's worth out of it, but it's also, if it ain't broke, why fix it? We've it's done, like we did that more back in the day. We did yeah. it a lot, like, you know, the, the, the 3800 V6 engine that yes. went everything. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, we reuse shit forever. Because I saw someone, I was in a supermarket car park this morning and, and someone drove by an old um, El Camino, mm-hmm. like, and it was just, you know, flattened out paint mm-hmm. ruined you know it wasn't a show car it was just obviously someone's car yeah but i thought now i bet that car is not too much trouble to keep going because no. there's not much to it it's simple it was making yeah. a lovely sort of wet v8 burble as <laughs> wet it is a really good you know, description blah, 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 blah. it's a good and, descriptor and as it went by i just thought because that'll be what it's a small block yeah it's a 350 v8 and a three speed or four speed automatic gearbox and a basic solid rear axle There's yeah fucking so nothing, nothing in it. that car is an unknown quantity nothing you can get all the bits for it yeah yeah just mend the it most hammer. basic mechanical ability can keep that going i and don't there's have something it, weirdly appealing about that i don't know just i mean yeah well the what, the, the modern the most modern version of that would be our crown victoria yes or which yeah, is yeah. which you can get for two grand right now and will run for a million miles with very basic maintenance. Someone down the street I'm staying on in um, Venice is uh, has got a uh, Buick Roadmaster. Mm-hmm. You know, on the 90s one. Yeah, yeah. It's like bloody love Wood-sided, it again. sided a wagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. Um, but I can't figure out if it's just someone who is a bit down on their luck and that's just their car mm-hmm. or if it's a hipster. Like, it's like... it's Could go either way. Car. Exactly. Truly could go either way because the Roadmaster is the upscale version of that Capri yeah. <laughs> platform. <laughs> I don't know. It could. Be, you should ask him next time. Leave a note. Yeah, sure he'd love to me. talk yeah, to you about it. Or just hang around with my binoculars, <laughs> looking for sailor taps. Hipsters and a beer. rarely admit that they're hipsters. No. Be careful. <laughs> uh, let's see. John O. Twist says, uh, "All right, Matt, it's a work day now. Thank you for understanding that joke." Small question for Mister Porter: What insidious car has Aaron Gold arranged for you, which we covered? Have you spotted any meth labs? No, sadly, no. <laughs> and, I mean. Uh, yeah, Oh, no? No. I think you have. You just haven't noticed. That was a back graph, wasn't it? Because I think last time I was on the show, we were talking about meth labs. Well, do you notice in Venice the real upturn of street-parked RVs that people are living in? Yes. Crazy, right? So my mate I was out with last night, who has just moved here in the summer, said that there's an app or a a website that was for legitimate RV fans, sort Mm. of, you know, pointing out nice campsites they could stay in in Nevada or whatever. Yeah. But it's been kind of hijacked by these street RV people. And it's now used to sort of say, look, the cops won't bother you here. Yeah. This is a good place to park because there's no restrictions or parking right. permits or whatever. This one, you don't have to move your car for street cleaning. You know, it's all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So that these people can just bed in. Straight up their... living in their RVs in the streets and are they, of Venice. Are they meth labs in there or is that just... The... No, they're just the... all. Let's call them the almost homeless. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? You can't, I guess... I don't know if you call someone who lives in an RV on the street homeless or not, but it's like they're almost homeless. Yeah, it's it's a bit. I I don't mind it. The I, you know I don't mind someone living in their RV in the street, except it takes up like three fucking parking spaces yeah. in an area where we're short on parking spaces there are already. A lot around Venice, aren't there as well? A, a lot. lot of RVs, a if lot you're going to be homless, short. this is a good place to be homeless. Well, the weather's nice. Warm, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what does VT stand for? Was the last one. VT is the term you use to re- to refer to as your films. Yes, videotape is what it stands for, and it's <laughs> I, it, I know it's <laughs> quaint, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's um, yeah the bits that were shot on location. Um, and edits together, which we sometimes call films. Um, 
but they're yes the bits where they're out in the field basically as opposed to studio bits yeah um funnily enough my publisher of that of my um as on that bombshell book about working on top gear uh when he reviewed the finished book he went do you think we should put an explainer in for what vt stands for and i went no everyone knows that and it's the thing i've been asked more than anything <laughs> and i can like, glossary it. next next yeah. book glossary. glossary speaking of which the roy lanchester book was very funny I oh forgot, thank you i yeah. forgot to mention in your intro but you're I, uh, I forgot to say oh i should mention that in the show <laughs> yeah he has he wrote a fictional autobiography of an auto of a fictional automotive journalist named roy lanchester and what's the name of the book actually uh, it's called how to be a motoring oh, journalist yeah, how to be a motoring which is journalist. a willfully misleading title because <laughs> yeah. it's not and there's a kind of I, I, I didn't really follow it through but there was like on twitter sometimes i allude to the fact that roy is kind of pissed off that the publisher made him call it that because it sounds like it might be a guide and he doesn't want anyone to become a car journalist because then they might steal funny. his gigs so. it's a funny book i really liked it uh sean said uh, charlie says hot dicks I'll say that for two dollars. <laughs> for two dollars, hot, hot dicks. <laughs> Sean's. <laughs> this is how More you earn. That sort this of is thing. how you earn a living. Two dollars to say. <laughs> two dollars to say hot dicks. Yeah, sure, okay. Thanks for the years of content. Sean says my girlfriend had a turbo NA6 Miata. Well, okay, whatever that means. Uh, she sold when she moved to California, um, thinking to get an S2000 or a new Miata to replace it. Want a stick shift convertible? I'm six foot three and fit better in the S2000. Is the S2000 too old? Well, no. If you get a nice S2000, it's it's not too old. But a nice S2000 costs a lot of money, actually. Now. Yeah, I was always a bit disappointed by the S2000 somehow. Never quite. Although apparently they're really sensitive to alignment. You've got to make they sure. They are very sensitive to alignment. Really, really sensitive. And if you do a coilover suspension, they're really sensitive to like your shock settings and stuff like uh, that. Okay, yeah. Um, they're nice cars. If you think you want one and you can find the right one, you'll probably be happy with it. Mm. It's not that it's too old because like a Honda from 2003 that has been well taken care of will continue to take care of you, yeah. I think. Um or, or uh, have you thought about a BMW Z4M Ooh. or a Z3M? They, Z4, do they do stick here? They do. Yeah, yeah. the Z3M, Z4M are both nice. Sorry, Z. Yes, Z. Yeah, Z. you got to say Z in America, Richard. And um, if he's six foot three, he won't fit in the Z3M very well. The Z4 uh, will be much better. Yes. The, that'll be tight in the three. Yeah. Um, is the S2000 too old? No, I don't think it's too old. The key is just to find the right one. Mm. There's two kinds of S2000s. Really mint expensive ones and ones that have had the absolute shit beat out of them and you should never buy. Yeah. Also, there's I mean, almost nothing in between. Too old. It depends on condition and stuff, doesn't it? Much. I mean, a, a, a Honda from the mid 2000s mm. is as reliable as a vehicle oh, God, gets. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I would say no, it's not too old. But also the ND Miata, the new one, is pretty nice. If you can afford the new new one with the new engine, oh, I better. heard that's really really good. It's really nice. It, yeah. I had a go in it for five minutes. I uh -huh. haven't had a real go yet. We'll try yet. We'll try soon. But um, yeah, I like those two. Brett Barber says good evening. Uh, hello, I've recently purchased a high mileage Mini GP2. Oof, good good grief. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for fourteen grand, Fiesta ST money. What modifications would you? Uh, what modification oh. would you do to the Mini? Uh, as a daily driver. Thanks for your time. So oh now, boy. was this the one GP two that, that had? I mean, nearest damn it, no suspension whatsoever. Yeah, like like teeth rattling. Yeah. yeah, I remember going along a road that had sort of undulations in it, and I had the window open, and I remember thinking if I wasn't wearing a seatbelt, there was a very <laughs> real chance I could just be thrown out of the window because it's one of the no stiffest travel. cars ever. Holy built. Holy mother of God! It's <laughs> yeah. just, so the first thing, daily driver, Jesus Christ, put some softer springs and shocks on it. Softer springs and shocks, maybe even downsize the wheels and yes. put more sidewall. And then a mini with two big wheels is a disaster. Yeah, you yeah. small wheels on a mini. It's one of those eternal problems isn't it where uh as a as a car enthusiast and someone who likes driving you kind of go yes smaller wheels because you know it drives better yeah but in the back of your head you're going yeah but it does look really big cool ram, big rims big yeah. rams no so. i say smaller wheels and tires and like richard said softer softer shocks coilover suspension set it soft um and also save your money for servicing because a high mileage mini has a potential to be a complete nightmare mm. every high mileage might not say that this person's high mileage mini is bad but all i'm saying is every high mileage mini i've been around has been a complete nightmare yeah that's... because that car is not built in germany <laughs> no sorry about that so it's built in england with an engine from brazil that's right <laughs> uh california says how are Roy Lanchester and Troy Queef doing? Give us an update on those 
Uh, Chaps. So, um, what? <laughs> I gotta say, because they, obviously they're fictional characters who live in my head, but if you want a pretend update on them, Roy, it's the day before Christmas, so uh, Roy is already drunk as a lord mm. and has probably been sick on his own television. It was and, the potatoes. Yeah, it was the potatoes. <laughs> he always run himself over <laughs> in a press car. Um, Troy Queef is, is out helm, helmsmaning something across uh, eastern England, as he always does, using too many words to explain simple things. Someone, the person below has paid $50. They have. That happens sometimes. A very generous man named Nathan has given us uh, $50. He, but you know why? Because he saw that my Safari 911 has its engine apart right now. Yes, I so saw this. The bad news is, no, the good news, the good news is I do not need new pistons and cylinder liners. Hooray. This is good. Because I brought you some. You know, you're gonna take your <laughs> they Christmas were laying around back. the Grand Tour <laughs> office. Yes. I just found yeah. them. They're pistons for various <laughs> different engines. I think one of them's a Brazilian mini um, But I, because I had mentally already spent the money on them, Right. I elected to shift those funds to do the bottom end in the car. So I'm actually uh, going to get it back in the second week in January with a completely new engine in it. There's nothing better than mentally assigning some money that then doesn't need to be spent. Right. Because then you've got free money. Totally. In the world of In the world of maths. fake money. Yeah. yeah. That I is man that. math. I, yeah. When I had my Jag XJR, which is a lovely car, and it never gave me a lick of trouble. But every time I took it for service, I assumed they would find something wrong. So I always had in my head, this is going to cost me a thousand pounds. Yeah. And yeah. it never did. Even That's close. fantastic. So I always always felt up on the deal yeah um, my my safari was a victim of poor timing it was gonna need all this shit sooner or later yeah it just needed it three months after it should have needed it <laughs> that, yeah. that was all have i told you that i bought a 911 did you what yeah. kind uh 997 gen 2 sir oh nice C2 s oh lovely all right yeah yeah, yeah black yeah. over black good uh good choice yeah great car daily driver is it pretty much yeah, yeah. Yeah, Perfect. I mean, it is because that's what I wanted. I'll be honest, I wanted a 911 for years and years and years and years. And years. And then I just finally kind of went, fuck it, I'm going to get one. Yeah. And it was also because I borrowed a 997 Gen 2 GT3 RS, which oh, is. Which is the best car ever. Yes. It genuinely yeah. is my yeah, favorite it's car. The best car. I've ever. forgotten that it's my favorite car. Yeah. And I had one, the Porsche have one on their heritage fleet in the UK. And oh, they, yeah, they, they I forgot. The they have a one. heritage fleet. Yes. Harris told me he borrowed one from them. Might even have been the same one. Yeah. And he said, because it had appreciated to over sticker, mm. they were just going to keep it. <laughs> that was <laughs> they a, could yeah. call it a heritage fleet. Yeah, it's the old press car. They just went, let's just keep it. The 9972 GT3 RS I had as a press car was the one that Hammond sailed off the track at VIR. <laughs> I really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got it like six months after him. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was the, that was the, the straw that broke the... Because I just went, oh, God, this is brilliant. And obviously, I can't really run to one of those without getting divorced. So yeah. I, I was like, no, screw it. I'm just going to go and get a 911. But now that you have it, it's a shockingly reasonable proposition, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's just an works. awesome car. It just goes and stops and does everything. And yeah. it's like, it, it can do the boring commutey bits. Yeah. And the thing is as well, because I was sort of like, oh, do I, do I stretch it to a 991? And then, but what I like about the 997 is the size. The size is better. It's a little car. Yeah. You don't, for, the 991's a lovely car, but for all its extra size, it doesn't have any more space. It's the same amount of space, yeah. just in a bigger package. Well, there's probably a bit more room in the back, which is great, because one of the things about having a 911 and having children is you can put your children yeah. in the 911 at the moment my kids are uh, four and one so that's okay so that's doable as they get bigger i may have to get a 991 just or a panamera to... i saw my kind of spirit porsche this morning of the 991s um parked up in in venice beach 991 carrera t yeah black over black no side stripe because i don't lovely. really like that i mm -hmm. like i like stealth mode and it was just perfect in every way just a really lovely discreet spec it had the back seats and the stereo put back in because that's yeah. just Downward. The Carrera T is awesome. It's unbelievably lovely. And my friend Batim at BBI Autosport said that with about four parts, he said two to four thousand dollars, he can make five hundred horsepower reliably in that engine. Uh, okay, yeah, there's a company called Litchfield in the UK doing mm -hmm. something similar. You, uh, They've nice. got that crazy GTR they're selling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, because I drove, I got out of a GT2 RS <laughs> and into a, a Carrera T. Yeah, driving on the road. Yeah. in Scotland, beautiful roads. And I just preferred the T by a mile. Just because it was more usable? More usable. And it was manual as well. Yeah. And the GT2 obviously is paddle. Which, I mean, my, the GT2 my is, is paddles, like a but... psycho death machine. It's just too much. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're Chris Harris or some kind of, you know, helmsman of that sort of, you know, size of testicle, then yeah. you probably could get more out of it. But I just, I was like, it's, apart from the else, it's not that you're sort of going, oh God, I'm going to die if I use all of this. But it's also you, the, the opportunities to unleash its incredible ability. Yeah. It's, they're so few and far between because just the roads aren't, 
unsighted enough for you to really yeah, road, these roads get were it up built and when a 300 horsepower car was very fast yeah yeah and so you just kind of go oh, well i could sort of floor it towards that corner yeah. but then i'll be arriving at that corner at 200 miles an hour <laughs> and i don't know what's around it yeah and um well in fact, as, as monkey harris as learned, harris learned yeah. it could be a pickup truck making a three-point turn yeah so god that's a shame poor gt3 I know. i'm glad he's okay poor gt3 you know what's really spooky was i was about to text him the that evening before to ask him how his um gt3 touring was going because I, I basically browsed those about every yeah. week because I really, really They're fucking those. sweet. Yeah. I saw I a GT3 for a Touring Club on the hill yesterday. I drove okay. them back to back, the Carrera T and the GT3 Touring. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And if you don't have the... If you're on a tighter road, the mm. Carrera T's faster. If you yeah. don't have the room. Yeah. If you're on an open, more open space, then, I mean, if you can afford the GT3 Touring, get that. Yeah, yeah. But, like, if not, you really don't feel like you're missing out with the Carrera When T. I first drove the Carrera T, I had... I, uh, Porsche brought... It was last Christmas, in fact, Porsche brought two left-hand drive ones over to the UK, and I had one for Christmas. And... Uh, I then started working out if I sold my Porsche and my Defender that I could buy one, and, and then I thought, no, that's just stupid. Yeah. Mainly because I don't want to sell my Land Rover. But you've no, you, have you scratched the itch with the S? What the nine eleven itch? Yeah, yeah. With your yeah. well, I've scratched it, but it's just now it's now it's just a permanent itch, and I'll probably sort of go. I probably yeah. never won't have a nine eleven unless you know circumstances dictate that that would be a silly thing to have because that does cost money to run. Like I had it serviced. Uh, just a regular, but the big service. Yeah. Plus, it needed two new back tires, and that was eleven, twelve hundred quid. Yeah, and expensive. And then one of the back lights had got a little crack in it, which is letting water in. Uh oh. And the back light was full of water, and that was five hundred and something pounds for a yeah. new back light. And you just go, mm-hmm. really? Okay, but you know, again, in my head, I knew it was going to be an expensive car to keep. You can't. It's a ten-year-old car. Yeah. It's always going to need little things doing. Yeah. The fact that it feels absolutely good for another ten years with not really falling apart touch wood is a testament to that's why you have a 911 isn't yeah it? yeah because they are my 87 engineered. feels like a quality item yeah you know, that's did you know what my next thing is not necessarily to get rid of the 997 um but just to then get a 964 and 993 <laughs> you just keep it air cool just keep life. it going i know i saw real. a beautiful 964 I'm slightly obsessed with 964s at the moment but you and everybody and, else. I know, it's annoying, isn't it? I know, forever. I They know. couldn't sell them 10 years ago, and now everybody I wish wants I one. seven of them. I know. just squirreled them away. Uh-huh. Yeah. You and everybody else, my friend. God damn it. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Alan, thank you for your donation. I appreciate that. Sleepy996 says, Mr. Hotel Slippers wants to wish you guys a Merry <laughs> Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Hotel Slippers. David Musso says, oh, thank you for... Uh, oh, I took him for a ride around Road Atlanta in the Jeep Trackhawk. Uh, You're <laughs> welcome. The Road Atlanta... Uh, the Trackhawk was hysterical. You should have... You had to go in one of those? No. I that is to. the stupidest, silliest vehicle ever built, and it's really, really good is fun. It, is it 707 horsepower? Yeah, it's, it's a Jeep the, with 700 horsepower. Power. It's really dumb and it's also really fun. Uh, Dante Zero says, I've been thinking about engine swapping my NB Miata. Thoughts on putting in a Motus MST V4. I don't know what that is. Motus MST V4. What engine would you put in a me? Oh, it's a bike motor. Now, V4s are generally. Oh, wait, is this the four cylinder LS motor? Have they they sold an LS in half? I Maybe. I don't know. I think it's just a bike motor. Modus MST. Yeah, look. Modus part of it was, was Pratt & Miller. They who they race GM. And this is a push rod, 90 degree V4. This has got to so be a half, half an LS motor. An LS. Yeah, it's got to be what this is. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. It's the inverse of that. You know those Jaguar V6s that it's just a V8 with two yeah, yeah, cylinders yeah. blanked on <laughs> They should have left them open. You could have stored bottles in them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what it takes to put in a Modus MST V4. I don't know if it fits. I don't know how that works. Yeah. I'm also going to ask why, because V4s are rough old things, aren't they? They're, yeah. They're not very balanced. No. I mean, I think if you're going to swap an NB and you want to do something really weird for a motorcycle, get one of those BMW K1600s yes. with the 1.6 liter inline six. I see your 1.6 liter inline six, and I raise you the... Uh, 2.3 liter three cylinder triumph engine oh, shit. out of those rocket <laughs> three bikes. Triumph rocket. Yeah. Unbelievable. I was walking down the street a few months ago and there was this unholy noise. You know, when you sort of hear something from behind you, and, you, and as a car nerd, you can kind of go, Hello, that's, yeah. a, that's an M5. Or yeah, that's yeah. A, you know, that's a 911. Uh, 
And I, Look I, at that I, engine. It makes the most extraordinary <laughs> sound. And I was kind of like, what is that? And so yeah. there's this bloke on this massive bike going by. Yeah, I think, is that a, would you say a 2.3 liter? I think it's 2.3 triple, yeah. Wow. And it looks awesome with that it, header. It's Yes, it does. So there you go. Get one of those. I just was in the canyons the other day, and I heard a guy riding an uncorked CBX. One of the you know those no. the Honda CBX has a that was a thousand cc transverse oh, inline yes. six motorcycle. Yes, I have seen those, and it sounds crazy with a straight pipe on it, really? like an F one car. Crazy, really? yeah. Does it rev to something insane? It revs like eleven. Right, it's not yeah, high so for a not, bike, but yeah, it's high yeah. for a you know a, straight for six. a straight yeah. six. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think I I think yeah. If you want to swap in a bike motor, I think the the BMW inline six. The this I don't know about the motors. But go for it. Fuck it. Have yeah, fun. Enjoy yourself. Yes, we should be encouraging this. But if you of... can find a trash Triumph Rocket 3, I think yeah. that's got to make big power too, right? Well, exactly, because you think about it, the, the, just the sheer capacity of that engine, it's going to have a bit of torque. Yeah. Where bike motors generally don't. I mean, it's a bigger displacement than the NB motor. Yeah. But it's, yeah. A, but it's a three, so it might still fit in. I don't know. I like it. Might fit. Who cares? If not, <laughs> just throw on the case. Dante say zero fifteen. Yeah, try it. Try it. Let us know how it goes. Yeah, Mike like Freddie it. Skeets <laughs> says I'm in the UK and I've been driving for two years now. What do you recommend for fifteen hundred pounds to six thousand pounds? Fun to drive, but somewhat usable and won't kill me. And cheapish insurance. Ooh. You know the UK market, Richard. This is yeah. your your question. I don't know. I mean, you, for that's that kind of money, you could cheap. get you could get a, like an old 106 Rally. They're great. A Peugeot 106 yeah, Rally. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they're fun to drive. Someone you won't kill me. Well, I mean, you know, if anything could kill you. If we were in America, I would say water, get a 2000 you? Honda Civic Si Coupe. That's what yeah, I would say in America. But you guys don't. We, we it doesn't work those. like that. Yeah. Hey, I tell you what you could get for that money, which is an underrated fun car. Is that the last Celica that we got? Or Celica, I guess you'd say. Is, is that the, the, the angular one? Angular one, one. yeah. yeah. And, and, and with the 190 engine in it, it was surprisingly nice. Okay. Quite light. Can you get or, one for under 6,000 pounds? Oh, God, I'd imagine so. Or that generation of MR2, the third generation MR2. Mind you, I mean, they're a bit frisky. Um, Evo had one as a long termer, and I borrowed it for the weekend. And they forgot to tell me as as they waved me off on a Friday evening. Have fun, have a great weekend. I was going away somewhere, and I was like, "Oh, brilliant convertible car, fantastic!" <laughs> I was going away on my own to meet some mates because uh -huh. that car had no trunk, so it's fine. Sort of had all my stuff on the passenger seat. Off I went. Bye. See you on Monday. And they'd forgotten to mention the back tires were basically poor. <laughs> And that car was a bit of a handful at the best of times. And <laughs> wait, I almost span it in London on my way out of the city. It sounds like this Freddie would learn how to drive really well on that. Yeah, cheapest like insurance, that. that's the only thing. But I reckon the, well, it's hard to say, isn't it? It's, I don't know. Insurance is a nightmare. I mean, how expensive could the insurance be on a five thousand pound car? Well, exactly. But if he's got a budget of six grand, then he's put a grand aside for the first year's insurance. There you go. So there we go. Problem there solved. There you go. One up, Peugeot one hundred six Toyota Celica. Do it. Uh, Tyler says, uh, "I read your road and track article about your safari, and I loved it. It's now inspired me to do a similar build to my '69 Mustang." So a this guy, '69 Mustang Safari car, he wants to do a build. On a '69 Mustang, oh look at to that. make it off road, and Holy I say, I God, say, I am incredible. with you, sir. Wow, a hundred percent. Do an off road '69 Mustang. All of these look perfect. Now, have you had people bitching at you for bastardizing an old 911? Um, not me directly. But, the, I mean, you know, the internet has, has spoken, and some of the internet is not pleased, but I don't give a fuck. Well, because I look at that and I go, oh, I bet that upsets Mustang purists. But then what you've got to remember about those old Mustangs, and the same is true of old 911s, they're not actually rare cars. They're not. There's they're loads not, There's a around. lot of them around. You can buy any anyone. I don't think... I think anyone can buy and you can find anything you want, right? Mm. Get in like people who complain about ruining a car or whatever when they're not like in the game. Like I didn't yeah. come and ruin your fucking car. Yeah. Like, go buy one. It's a if you want to, if you want to be the preserver of nine elevens, fucking open a museum and fill it with nine elevens. Yeah. I will never be the guy to tell you not to do yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like. By the way, my car drives awesome. <laughs> Does it? Now, yeah. again, it's a sign of getting old, but I have for some time been quite obsessed with cars that ride properly. Is it, the ride nice? Yes. It, it rides well, and I can go full throttle over speed bumps, and nice. it's beautiful. Good. It is I'm sorry it's not here now, but next time you no, come back I, to I'd America, really like to you'll have a go in it, and it's fucking great. And I think this dude's 69 Mustang off-road car will be sweet. There's a guy in Rally America um, who... Um, 
who raced a rally uh, I Rock, who had a had a fucking. Uh, <laughs> it was oh oh man, Rally America. Let me find it. Um, where it was? Oh, here it is. This yes. guy. This is an actual. <laughs> this is a competition rally vehicle that I watched <laughs> race. And this thing was cool as fuck. Have they photoshopped out his arm out the window firing a pistol into <laughs> right. the air? Because that is the most American thing I've ever seen. I think, seen. you know, if you did this exact thing with the fog lights on, on your Mustang, I think it would look rowdy as can be. And this rowdy. guy did well. This guy did really well, too. Look, here he is. At, here he is. Yes. <laughs> this, is a, this is a legit guy. He took this thing very seriously, and his car wow. did well. It was fucking great. It was very well. Fun. I recommend God bless it. You, sir. What the fuck? Come back. Um, yeah, do that. Okay, where are we at here? Uh, do we get the new Suzuki Jimny in the U.S.? No, we do no, not. There was one here in L.A. though last. Yeah, month, they had one as around as a demo car. Have you been around one? Did you? Yeah, we did a whole. You again, did a thing sorry with to one? plug. We did a whole Smith and Sniff with it, and we got like well, I think it's our most watched video. Actually. Well, it's like it's like a viral car. Yeah, but it would, I don't think it would sell in America. So no, it's too small. Yeah, did you I mean, enjoy it's it though? Comically small. Yeah, I absolutely adored it. I, I liked it more than Reason. I still can't figure out why I liked it so much. It's just got personality. It is charming. Sweet. Although someone uh, someone rightfully said on Twitter, if you're upset about the Jimny not coming here, just buy a Jeep Renegade and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> which, I, which now that I think about it, it's like, yeah, he's got a point. I thought you were going to say they said, just buy a Mercedes G-Wagon and park it further from your house. <laughs> oh, look at that that's tiny car. Right. No, it's just far away, man. That's funny. Because it is. Uh, but that's the, I don't really like the G-Wagon, even the new one. I, 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 I I'm not a big fan. I can't get on with it. I don't know because the thing is, one of those cars where that car journalists wank themselves senseless over, which they do yeah. with the Jimny as well. Yeah. I'm guilty of that. My friend Johnny Lieberman, yeah, he goes into a corner, just looks at pictures of G wagon. I know, and just fucking he's cranks a proper, them out. Proper G wagon. He's obsessed purple, with them, isn't he? It's disgusting. Something about I think visiting the factory of oh, those is, is like a it's like an iconic experience of some kind. Going to the factory, no, I don't give a shit, I but. Don't know. I don't know. I like the door sound. The door yes. thunk is great. Except uh, that's what what I don't like about that brand new one is they've they put that in and they know full well how to make doors that close quietly and softly, but they've had to engineer had, it to be worse. Yeah, that's a Harley Davidson pr- complex. Yes, they built a better motorcycle, and the and people went, "Uh, you're gonna have to go fuck yourself yeah. with that." <laughs> can you give? Can, can you make them shitty good. again, please? Yeah. <laughs> And that's the thing with the G-Wag, and it's just like they're sort of, and that's, it's so un-Mercedes, you know, they're sort of yeah. relentless in their pursuit of technology and perfection, and yet yeah. for this, they have this little rush of blood to the head, and they, A, make it retro, and they're not generally very retro as a car company. No. Like the SLS and stuff. Like the SLS was mildly retro, but, but in general. But mostly they're future looking. Yeah. And and then they do this sort of funny, idiotic, exceptionally expensive 4x4 that is willfully worse than it could be. It's all about the margins, brah. But also what I think it exposes about car journalism generally is that all these people who, who crap on about handling sort of, you know, the kind of nuances of handling. And that's why we voted the blank over the blank. because That's of, why the Julia won anything. Yes, <laughs> because uh, it's on limits, uh, a steering feel <laughs> and a lack of tread shuffle when you're in a constant state to high speed corners yeah. really made it the winner here. And then... <laughs> All these car journalists who've sort of agonized over this kind of stuff that people really won't ever experience. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. they'll go, Oh, I love a G Wagon. You go, yes. But it handles like toss. <laughs> so you're basically admitting that handling isn't that important. You unwittingly just undermined your own tillermanship, sir. Somebody wrote an article last year that was like, How to be a British car journalist. And one of the steps was, you know, you say that the last version was shit, but then they changed, you know, they added half a millimeter of toe out to this one, and yeah. all of a sudden the handling is spectacular. Yes. Like There's that. a lot of that goes on. Yeah. Uh, so, Jimny, thumbs up? Uh, if you yeah, yeah. One. No, I absolutely adore it. I really do. In fact, oh, God, no, I can't say. There was something I was going to say, and I can't because it's going to blow a surprise. <laughs> On the Grand Tour? No. Oh. <laughs> Something else entirely. Okay. I'll tell you That's after. okay. Keep I'm it really to yourself sorry. for now. Yeah. Tease it. Uh, Thomas Harrison Lord from England says, is Richard working on more books for next year? And where do you find the motivation to write so much? You write a lot. Uh, I don't think I do. Do I? I think you do. I think the people who do write a lot think it's not a lot, but it really is. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I should write less. Because <laughs> I'm fundamentally Maybe. really lazy. So, um, but what's the thing? Funny enough, when I did the Royal Lanchester book, I, that was me, a rare thing of me deliberately like kicking my own ass and to not be lazy. How long did it take you to write that book? Well, fits and starts, because what happened was I kind of decided it was a good idea, wrote some notes, then put them in a drawer and didn't think about it for like two years. And then when my daughter was born last year, uh, I was staying up late to do a little bottle feed in the middle of the night. 
and I had all this spare time. I was just sitting up watching TV, and I was like, this is a waste of time. I should do something productive. So I started writing, made myself like write an hour a night, and that's how I got started. The problem is then you get in deep, and it's like, yeah. well, I've done about two-thirds of this book. I basically need to finish it. And that last third was harder work because by then that routine of staying up late to bottle feed my daughter had changed i wasn't doing it so i had to make time to write which is always i'm really fascinated by because because you know i kind of that's what i do for a living i write stuff and i'm always fascinated by other people's how they write yeah because i always assume i'm doing it wrong and so you know there's a lot of that stuff where you can read about like famous writers processes, yeah, their processes. and i'm obsessed with reading those because i'm always like Oh, how, well, how did Hemingway do it? I went to Hemingway's house in um, Key <laughs> he West. He drank a bottle of rum. Yes, exactly. Well, that's it. <laughs> he went and fought in the Spanish Pet, Civil War. Pet a, a three-toed <laughs> cat yes. for a while. Well, that's it. So I went to his house in Key West where those three-toed cats are. I think they're six-toed or three-toed? How many toes uh, do they have? It's the wrong number, it's but the I wrong think number, it's six. Yeah. I think it's six-toed. And um, we, they let you into his little office there, and he's got his typewriter there, and they said, and Hemingway used to come up here and he'd write 400 words a day. And I was like, what a lazy bastard. <laughs> That's like half a column Nothing. for Evo. I do that in a morning. But Hemingway's he cats have six toes, in case you can. Uh, and he wrote 400 words a day. Yeah. All fucking blackout right. drunk. Then, yeah, then got blackout drunk and went <laughs> marlin fishing or whatever. What a life. Um, so, yeah, I, don't, I am quite idle, but I suppose I do, I do churn out nonsense. Uh, am I working on any more books? Yeah, I've got a book. I'm going, starting on a book uh, next month, which I'll be writing for, well, for however long it takes. And then it's out later in the year, which is going to be our F1. Nice. Nothing to do with telly, just about Formula One. Oh, right. But it's a joke one, obviously. It's not, it's not <laughs> joke for Yeah, it's Perfect. not Adrian Newey's book, which is brilliant, by the is way. Is it? Should I, should I get that one? Yes. I tried to read Jackie Stewart's book. It was fucking unreadable. Jackie Stewart. It was 900 <laughs> pages of him fucking learning to play bagpipes. I'm going to <laughs> fuck, brother. <laughs> Are you just being racist about <laughs> Shooting Scottish quails. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 300 pages on shooting quails. Like, I don't care. Do you know what Jackie Stewart used to do, though? Because he was, he was under contract to Ford for years, like from, from the late 60s, maybe certainly early. Yeah. 70s and so all of the other sort of early 70s hotshot drivers who had like Muras and Berlioza Boxsters and, and, and Jackie Stewart had a Ford Granada because he got it for free <laughs> but then Makes he used to turn funny. up to they would get him along and they'd have like a prototype of you know the next Escort yeah, 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 or something yeah, yeah. and he would come along and give his feedback yeah because he's a smart guy and he was smart enough to go that if he came along and absolutely door handled the thing and then went, oh no, you need to adjust the toe in, yeah, then like, to customers him. don't care about that. <laughs> he used to come along, and I think probably the engineers would be like, oh, brilliant, Jackie Stewart's going to drive us around. It's going to be amazing. And he'd drive around at 30 and he'd go, now this button is quite hard to see from this driving <laughs> position. And he was all about that. He was all about ergonomics stuff. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Apparently he was obsessed with all this sort of customer experience. Yeah. And, and tartan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> His trousers are really <laughs> upsetting. Says, Would you rather have a brand new S Class or a low mileage Rolls Royce Ghost for the same price? Ooh. Um, Ghost does nothing for me. Really? Not a thing. Uh, I like the Dawn. I like the Wraith. Right. Ghost, nope. I see yeah. way too much 7 Series BMW in the Ghost. Oh. Now, you see, I would say that basically it's like, do you want, brand new S-Class is like the nicest room in a mid-priced hotel. A Ghost uh. is the cheapest room in an amazing hotel. Okay. And even the cheapest room in an amazing hotel would give you a more memorable experience. Probably true. Because you can go down to the bar. Probably true. I'm spoiled. That's why I'm not that into the ghost. <laughs> yeah, that is a great you know, car journalist If you're less thing. spoiled, yeah. You're it's not, like, yeah, but ghost. You sort of roll up in, in something like a You know ghost. what I'd rather have? If Can I add a third one into there? I'd rather have a 2011 Phantom. Oh. If you want to, if you want to play that game, Ooh. I'd rather have a 2011 Phantom with low miles than any of that. Yes, the Phantom is what's up. The, when you drive a Phantom, it's like yeah, yeah. a Ghost is a drives like a really nice Seven Series. A Phantom drives like nothing else in yeah. the world. It's True. Like sailing. True dat. Aaron says, "Quick word of appreciation from Ireland. Have a pint on me." No, uh, uh, thank you very much, Aaron. Last question, and then we end the show. Richard, is there any chance the trio, meaning Jeremy, Richard, and James, can come on the TST podcast? I'm just going to throw <laughs> out a no. They don't give a fuck about this guy. They have real promotion to do. <laughs> they I bet hate even... doing promotions so much. Yeah, they really hate it. I mean, granted, as far as promotion goes, this is more fun than most. But I'm going to just answer that for him and say that's probably not fucking happening. <laughs> Uh, Smith and Sniff is on YouTube. Sli like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like it's and subscribe. Two, two British car nerds talking nonsense in a car. It works good. And, uh, of course, SniffPetrol.com. 
Uh, yes. Um, I don't know. I, but I presume like most people listen to your show. Are they in the US or you're all over the world? Um, our top... And basically, it's it's like 75% North America. Right. But we also have uh, the remaining 25% is like UK, Australia, New Zealand. It's yeah. like wherever English is spoken, we do okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so I'm sort of the other way around. So it's like, I think from 75% at least UK reads. Yeah. So, sorry. so it's quite UK-centric. But I always think I should try harder to make it more accessible to... Other people. I don't think it's inaccessible. Uh, no, probably not. Oh, you're good. You good, man? I'm really worrying too much about it. You good, man? Uh, follow me on Instagram, and of course, you're. Are you sniff petrol on Instagram as well? Uh, sniff right? underscore. Sniff petrol. Under, there's under, another do, sniff petrol. Yeah, and it's just some it's random not guy. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. happened to me. Did I tell you this last time I was here? I, you know, Piston Heads, the British yeah. uh, website. On oh, their boy, forum, there was somebody whose username was Sniff Petrol, and this oh. was years ago, and I was a bit. Like, well, that's weird because people might think it's me. So I messaged him and I went, "Mate, why are you sniff petrol?" And he went, oh, "I just really like your website." And I was like, <laughs> "It's a tribute." But you know, it's like, he's I, a I, tribute I, band. Yeah, but that's it's just it's just because you really like something. It's like I really like Samuel L. Jackson, but I wouldn't go around on the internet going, "Hi, I'm Samuel L. Jackson." Here's official. Your, here's your Instagram. Yeah, it's just pictures it's of full cars. Full pictures of as cars. You'll notice. Uh, it's lovely though, but pictures of cars in England. Yeah. And uh, no, that's in Italy. In a field. That's in Italy. Though, <laughs> so it's not all in England, you see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I started off because I didn't know what to do with Instagram. So I started off and I thought as a joke because all I saw on Instagram was people constantly putting pictures of Lamborghinis and things up. So I oh, thought yeah. I'll just put the, the shittest worst. cars possible. <laughs> yeah. So if you go down to the very first cars I posted, look, <laughs> so that's a all, Rover Metro. That's a Peugeot 1007 garbage. with a dent in it. <laughs> That's an arty shot of a Nissan Almera. A Nissan Primera, Peugeot 205. They're quite nice, though. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then I got a bit bored of that, so the cars start to get a cars bit more interesting. The cars start to get a little better. <laughs> not that, I mean, they're still like... There's still like a ran... Like, what the fuck is this? That's a Ford Sierra Estate, sir. That's also in Italy. <laughs> Jesus. I know. <laughs> You do better. I might have mentioned this before, but I am quite nerdy about cars. Yeah, you are super nerdy. Follow me on Instagram. You all know who that is, the smoking tire. I post nerdy things like, look... The rear tire, spare tire mount on an 04 Cayenne Turbo. And I saw I that have not I went, seen this in years. I forgot that that was an official I, thing. I've never, I haven't it's seen one of these in such a long time. <laughs> it's that the chrome is a and nice factory touch factory well. 19-inch chromes. You know, the, these wheels only existed. Here's some, because my dad had an 04 Cayenne Turbo in this color, but no spare tire rack. These wheels only existed... Because this car came with uh, 21-inch tires from the factory, the sport tires. Right. Which at the time, 21s and 04 were like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. And it was impossible to get a winter tire in a 21. They, nobody made one. Uh, so you to get winter tires, you had to go to the 19s, which uh, was this. Right. And he had to buy a set of these wheels. He was fucking pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, Richard Porter. Oh, there we go. Richard Porter, thank you for coming in, sir. Thank you for having I me. I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoy Arizona uh, more than the people who live there do. <laughs> <laughs> Meth labs. Meth labs. All right, cool. That Smoking Tire podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, and ideally something to say. Merry Christmas, y'all. I will see you next time. Bye.